BFF Dynasty presents Married to the Game for your pleasure. What is good? We're back and we're going to give you another mock draft today. But this one's going to be a little different. We're not going to just, as Big Co like to call it, Neanderthal our way through these things and just keep clubbing running backs <laughs> in the head and dragging them back to our cave. <laughs> we're going to switch it up today and we're going to go with a receiver heavy draft just to kind of show you what that looks like and how bad it we is. We would do it if we were doing it. <laughs> get your mock reps in. <laughs> right. get, your, get your reps up. Different styles, different different factors, different guys here to talk about today. So we're gonna we're gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna be using the fantasy pros system here. Uh, it's gonna be a twelve man PPR dynasty, no super flex. So running back, running back, receiver, receiver, two flex, no kicker or defense. Um, Get rid of them. So we'll also be doing the simulcast thing again, kind of day, if you can call it that. If you're listening just on the podcast, be sure to go over to YouTube and check out the play by play. You can see the entire draft, the draft picks, the draft boards, when we made every pick, who was available, all that kind of stuff. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. If you go over to YouTube, it vastly helps us out, just like all the other ratings and reviews do. Um, but if not, if you just want to listen on the podcast in your car like you normally do, that'll work too. Yeah, or you can definitely go hit up the website, the ffdynasty.com. Uh, you can navigate to the More tab and the Mock Draft Boards, and you'll be able to see all the different mock drafts we've done and see the, the, the actual board of the results. Right. And then if you, you didn't can, watch live on YouTube, you can see the board on the website. Right, and there'll be a link to both the YouTube clip and the podcast, so whichever your preference is. Yeah, well, so see, cat's out of the bag. Jay Wayne's here. Yeah, Jay Wayne, how you doing? Good, good. Glad to be here. We got old old Big Co holding it down. What up, Big Co? Football season's back. Couldn't be happier. Literally, I couldn't sleep last night. I'm laying in bed, couldn't fall asleep, and I'm like, you know, upset because I need to be going to sleep. That's the goal. Yeah. You're in bed. Everybody else is asleep. I'm sitting there hanging out with myself, running through my dynasty rosters in my mind, and I'm like, I should go to sleep. But then I just got this smile on my face. I'm like, whatever. It's football season. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to sleep for the next six no, months. No sleep in football I'm not gonna, seasons. I'm not going to be able to sleep until we're down to like the divisional playoffs. For sure. And it's kind of winding down. Yeah. Uh, so again, we're going to do this draft here from the sixth spot. We're going to go wide receiver heavy. So we're going to be um, olaying the uh, running backs in most cases, just not as early and as often as we as we normally we do. We still took an RB in the first round. Right. Well, I mean, what can you do? Way to spoil it, Jason. You can't Way not to spoil it, Jason. I do want to, before we start, hit you with a disclaimer that this does not reflect our views or beliefs on how to draft your team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got hit up when we put this all out on the Twitters and stuff. People were like, oh, you can't you can't leave the first four rounds without getting an RB, Three. WR1. Three rounds. But or four. I mean, they were probably upset about that fourth round, too. Whatever. But, hey, but, you, uh, you do you, Bubba. My, I know my system works. I've won with my system. Absolutely. Anybody's system can work. Right. I mean, there's no right or wrong way no, to do this. No, for sure. It's just... And it's, we're almost doing this out of spite, though, here this episode. Like, we're going to go wide receiver mock? heavy. We're spite mocking it's them? It's a spite mock. All right. To go wide receiver heavy and see how you could... You know, how's this, how's this team going to end up if you are wide receiver minded if you don't watch to... yourself when the season's over this is gonna be the best team we draft yeah right <laughs> the spite mock my... yeah and i don't and i don't again i'm not saying that there's a right or wrong way i mean drafting running backs in my opinion is the right way but there's a million ways to skin more than one way to skin a cat i believe is the yeah. saying and yeah. you can win every which way you just if you're going zero rb everyone can't be going zero rb like it just doesn't work when everyone was on the zero rb train it's not going to work for you. If everyone's going robust running back, it's going to be a little tougher to make that work for you. Like you just got to kind of see what's going on. And, and what would you say is your favorite way to skin a cat? Uh, we'll save that for the after show. Uh, Uh, (laughs) he was going to attempt it. (laughs) You have an answer for that question. (laughs) He was going to give it a go. All right. You guys ready? (laughs) Forwards. Okay. All right. So actually we started, we started another mock in the same spot and we had to start it over because they gave us Zeke, Dalvin Cook and Freeman, and how could we pass that up? <laughs> right. So we had to. We, we, had, we go in there. Let's draft wide receivers. Boom, boom, boom. We got three running backs. Like, this, <laughs> this didn't work the way we planned yeah. it. Let's just start this to, over. We had to go bury our <laughs> Neanderthal clubs in the backyard, so yeah. we couldn't use them. And so we're on the clock at one six. We have. Let's kick this thing off here. Go head over to the YouTube page and follow along. Boom. Nuke and Odell are are gone by this point. Um, we do have the option of taking Le'Veon Bell, 
Mar- uh, Michael Thomas, David Johnson, Alvin Kamara. So all those guys are available. We, as a group, pretty much take it down to DJ and Le'Veon Bell. Just, I mean, I know we're going wide receiver heavy, but in my opinion, if, if you're going wide receiver heavy and Antonio Brown, Nuke, and Odell are all off the board, I mean, you have to go with one of these running backs in Zeke or, or David Yeah, Johnson. I mean, it, we, you're getting in here, we're like, all right, let's take some wide receivers and let's figure this thing out and see how tough it is to get some running backs in the rounds where we're normally taking wide receivers because we loaded up early. But uh, if you're in, if you're sitting here at pick six and Antonio Brown, Odell, and Hopkins are already gone, you right. you can't don't force the issue there either. If you if you're like I got to take a wide receiver, just trade back a couple picks, right? Pick up some equity and don't like just say, well, I'm I'm got to get a wide receiver. I'm taking Michael Thomas. Like that's right. that's kind of dumb. Not that Michael Thomas isn't awesome. And right. like Casey said, we, it was a group David Johnson versus Le'Veon Bell. But I am kind of open up to I'm opening up to the idea of bringing Saquon Barkley into that conversation for this reason. Uh, uh, For this reason, if you're not quite sure and if you're not as confident as we are about the way your roster is going to play out and your ability to be very competitive year one and two, you know, you could pick David Johnson or Le'Veon Bell in your first round and then kind of blow it. And then you got a running back who's quote unquote getting close to 30 in a year or two. If you're not exactly confident on your lineup, you take Saquon Barkley and you're not that, you know, you, if you don't follow right. our advice and crush it through the rest of the draft, <laughs> you know, then you got Saquon. I and mean, you, I, you know, I, I'm just throwing it out there. I, I can't I, hate on taking that youth on Saquon and what the upside could be, but I'm, there's no chance I'm passing David Johnson or Le'Veon Bell up here. I'm going get, to get in this three-year window and ride the lightning. Absolutely. Me neither. I can't pass it up either. I, just, I do like the idea of say I've, I'm opening up to the idea of putting Saquon So on one quick thing that I just, you know, let's say Nuke and Odell, one that had you had they had slid to to this pick and we weren't we were just in a regular draft again what i would try to do if nuke and odell were here and those running backs all kind of went off the board heavy that i want mm-hmm. and maybe saquon still left i'm probably going to try to trade back a couple of picks let somebody else take these receivers that somebody's dying to have and then i'm going to go continue to i probably picked up a draft pick down the road so like you were saying last show like you like to have seven picks in the five first five picks or you know Please. trading back out of that first spot when nuke and odell have, are available it's is a good way to get there and yeah. still get your running backs on the turn there yeah. so uh, but we end up going with dj here over Le'Veon bell it was pretty much a consensus uh deal for us just because we felt like you know maybe david johnson is the safer of the bet i mean Le'Veon. it's like we've said before it's been every time we talk about these guys it's always been Le'Veon bell and who else he's been yeah. very consistent with what he's got going on we just feel like dj is i don't know just being hated on right now for for no reason he's as good as Le'Veon bell maybe not quite i don't know i think they're both on the same level to me like i just well, da- Le'Veon Bell has just done it time and time and time again. David Johnson's got one huge season under his belt. He was coming back for another one. He was starting, you know, the first th- two and a half quarters of that game. He was going. He was looking like David Johnson, and right. he broke his wrist. He's out in the first game of the season. Like he does. Le'Veon Bell's got four seasons in a row yeah. where he's just the best. And David obviously, Johnson's, he's been hurt in and in, right. in, in and out of those games. But for two seasons in a row, he hasn't been hurt. And he's been the best running back on the field. You know. So yeah. well, last two years ago, he was hurt. He missed some games. I think. Um, well, for me here, it's it's, it's David I gotta Johnson's, go David Johnson because basically the off the field right. and, and the, the 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 looming suspension that could happen with Le'Veon. He's mentioned the word retirement before. He's got a very successful rap career that he could <laughs> fall back on. That was kind of a joke, but he he thinks he does anyway. Um, I, I can't blame me for going Le'Veon because he's just going to crush it when he's in he's there. I so just consistent. don't know. I, I feel better about David Johnson. Yeah, there's no, there's been no serious injuries to the lower body of David Johnson, right? And he's never been in trouble off the field. And I just, I like that. I think David Johnson's going to be good. I can't argue with you. Whoever you want to take here, I just, David Johnson would be up in this converse. Like he's just being disrespected a little because bit of right a wrist now injury. because of, he's got a lot. He less didn't miles. play last he's year. He got a lot basically. less miles on his body. Plus, too. you know, Le'Veon's switching out coordinators here and he's also not coming into camp which was fine for him last year he started off a little slow but he made it through the season it is the qb coach coming in taking right. over so it's a, some stability it's be there consistent yeah. yeah he'll be fine he's with the catches and all that stuff so anyway it's semantics here we went dj let's get to the next pick here let's do it did you have something else to say Big well it's just if you're if, waiting it, yeah if you're looking for the wide receiver here and for some reason deandre hopkins is there it's hard for me not to take him 
I, I like Casey's idea about trading back a pick or two because if you do that and somebody's going to be like, I can't believe DeAndre Hopkins is available at 1-6 and they probably give you the farm just to move up from 1-9 to 1-6 to get him because right. they thought they would never get, he would get not get past one or two or three. So I, there's different ways to play it. But if, if you're interested in that one wide receiver that is a difference maker for the next you know handful of years, DeAndre Hopkins is hard to pass. And then obviously Antonio Brown, I mean, if he's, if he's there, I can't pass him up either. Well, except if the running backs are there. Well, if you're in the first eight picks in the draft, you're not going to, you're, there's, you're either going to, you're going to, you know, you got five running backs with Saquon and above. Yeah. And then you got Odell, DeAndre Hopkins, Antonio Brown. So if you're at pick one, eight or earlier, you're going to, you're looking at the top of the top. Right. And All there's right, nothing so wrong with, with that. Bunch of picks go off the board here. Right. So we're left basically at, at two, six here, right? Is that where we're at? Two, yep. six. Seven, two, two, seven. Two, seven. We're at two seven here. Um, so we basically have the choice of Keenan Allen, Amari Cooper, or Diggs in our wide receiver heavy draft here that we're going with. Obviously, Melvin Gordon's on the board, and if we were doing things our way, we would take Melvin Gordon right here. In a jiffy. Last time, I'm going to mention that okay. about the running backs here, yeah. what we would have done. <laughs> um, so it's basically it comes down to, like I said, Amari, Diggs, and Keenan we kind of all agree on Keenan for the most part here, just because it's it's pretty safe. You know that there's at least at least eighty catches coming his way. Yeah, if any of his healthy, I don't see how you don't say a hundred. You know, right? Well, I'm just conservatively saying right. eighty. Yeah, you know, and he's yeah had a hundred and two catches last year, almost fourteen hundred yards, six touchdowns, right. one hundred fifty nine targets. Phil's so. boy, nothing's changed besides the tight end position is non-existent now. Right. So, right even better and there's no injury he's coming off of or anything like that last season last off season he he was really picking up but he was still coming off of a torn acl so right you know this still holds it back a little bit but once you come off of a 285 point year so in years past it would have been amari cooper no question um at this at this position that's correct um position it would be ridiculous like you'd be stoked to have him here i think in 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 prior previous years uh but keenan seems to be very safe you don't know what's about to happen with amari cooper he would be my next pick i would probably i'm taking amari over Diggs. um i would second that but you know just to hit old uh clutch fantasy up jacob uh rick road there he, got it right got he, it right i did i've been practicing probably wrote it down he, he th well i just wrote his twitter handle down <laughs> he he threw out just a couple of numbers the other day of what you know the wide receiver one was in Gruden's system and target wise. And it was, you know, 153, 145, 133, 140, 142, 139, 122, 152, 143, 98, and 138. And he spit out an average of about 137 targets for yeah. the wide receiver one in Oakland. And I believe in Amari Cooper's talent. He apparently he was really hurt last year. I saw reports saying that half the players in the league wouldn't even played through what Amari Cooper was dealing with last year. And I think there's tons of potential there. I think Carr could get Carr can be right. Cooper could be right. And there's going to be, it, it appears if history tells us anything that there's going to be plenty of targets for Amari Cooper. And I love his ability. Yeah, I'm I mean, just going to go with the safety net of Keenan here though. He had 96 targets last year, yeah. even with as bad as it was and missed a couple games and wasn't right at all. And had that one ridiculous game versus the chiefs 45 points. But yeah, other than that, just really struggled from an injury standpoint but i mean he's still super young dude he just turned 24 so did it, you you taken you got no problem taking keenan because yeah, i mean this is i'm torn here i i'm happy to see keenan at keenan allen to me like you you look at his name right now on paper in the second round two six there's jay wayne getting right keenan healthy keenan to me feels like the more stable week to week PPR producer Amari Cooper still feels like that I'm about to be shot out of a cannon young man making history kind of guy and like what everything Casey just said I don't think I don't think the case can be made for the guaranteed like as far as, far as Diggs goes I, the with Thielen being there and Kyle Rudolph being there and and you know having um uh Dalvin Cook coming back healthy I don't think you can say Stefan Diggs is guaranteed as many targets as Amari Cooper is so I feel like Cooper is a good pick as well. I've, plus you have a quarterback turnover. Plus you have a, a coordinator turnover. In, right, in right. Vikings. Lane. So I mean, I I personally I love Diggs, uh, and, and I love Amari Cooper as well. I'm not as 
I don't love Keenan Allen as much, obviously because of the injuries and stuff for the past season. It's a love hate relationship it with is. me over here. With Keenan, you gotta have, it's gotta be a love hate with Keenan because he's just been so beat up. When he's as, healthy, you love him, and when he's hurt, you're kicking yourself you didn't trade him. Well, the other thing here is is that you know we're taking Keenan because it's safe and it's great, and I'm a hundred percent okay with that. And that ridiculous season he just right. had. And uh, there's nothing to suggest that it's going to get any worse. But this is probably Keenan Allen's ceiling of where he's getting drafted. Amari Cooper could easily be back up in this uh, nuke Odell First range round. after a season of awesomeness. Yeah, it would def. I mean, Keenan Allen's just got in that injury stink on him. You know, but it was fluky, right? It wasn't just one part of the body. It was all over the things. I get all it. over the place. It, I get it. I've and there's maybe he broke a mirror like eight years ago or something. Right, right. Walked under a ladder. Something. Yeah, black something. cat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The whole the trifecta. All of it happened in one day. Right. I, I, this Keenan would probably have to put up another monster season to just uh, com, you know wipe and wipe another layer of stink off of him. Also, he can't one handed catch. Do you think he skinned that cat? <laughs> he must have <laughs> the black cat. He must have skinned, skinned it the wrong way. There was yeah. the ro- not the right under way. a ladder. But, well, just one. I know you said that was the last thing you'd say on Melvin Gordon, but with his all, and and I agree with you on the ceiling of Keenan Allen there. I mean, maybe he could get more than six touchdowns, but he's not a he's not a big. Dude. I just he's meant not ceiling a, of the draft of where the draft pick is. I like, think as far as a season goes, a hundred catches, fourteen hundred yards, six touchdowns. I don't know that he's really besting that. Right. Yeah, sure. And as awesome as that season was, I mean, he was winning you weeks. You know, from time to time, like throughout that season, I know for sure, and. Melvin Gordon still outscored him by four points. And Casey said it a couple of weeks ago, like we might not have even seen Melvin Gordon ceiling. So just the one last thing of like why you should probably take Melvin Gordon in this <laughs> instance is because, I mean, it was so good with Keelan and that was his ceiling and Mel- Melvin still outscored him and well, as far could have had a better season. Keenan's ceiling is the second half of the season was a ridiculous pace. The first half of the season wasn't quite the same. So if you kind of middle – the two, I mean, maybe you still get the same thing, but if he picks up on the pace he left off the last six or seven games of the season, like his game log is two, silly. Tale of two different cities. I mean, the, the, it was the second half was like, oh, okay, we got to throw it to Keenan 15 times a game. I can do that. Well, right. he hit a stretch where it was 40, 35, 26, 17, 10, 11, 34. It's a pretty crazy stretch. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So if he picks up anywhere near that, He's. I don't think his ceiling is a hundred catches. I think it's more like a hundred and twenty. Yeah, that's 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 all all fair. You guys ready to move along? Here? Sure. All right. I think so. I have a feeling we're going to hit this draft button. So I don't think I don't think you're going wrong if you're taking Keenan, Amari Cooper, or Diggs in that spot. Yeah, I just feel really safe about my squad moving forward with David starting with David Johnson and then going with with Keenan Allen here in a nice two three year window to pretty much stay where he was for the next yeah. two or three years catch wise with with old phil um so like we're moving along here we're going now we'll be at pick three six is Mm -hmm. that right all right so a bunch of people fall off the board Devontae freeman goes right before us here which in every other draft we would be really bummed about that but here we don't care (laughs) we were glad right so that we could take another wide receiver for your pleasure so we have a bunch of choices to be made here we got gronk Corey davis baldwin jarvis Mixon, McKinnon, Howard, Geis. So we're kind of trying to stay away from the running backs a little bit here. Um, they crept into the conversation. But for I, sure. You know, then I think we narrowed it down, and we're talking potential Gronk, Corey Davis, Landry, Baldwin. So we're, I guess we're going to table Gronk here because we're just uh, – he's a, we, when we talked about Ertz and all that other stuff, we gave you why Gronk is the difference maker and his 17 points a game since like 2012 yeah. or whatever is incredible. So we're, we're going to pass on Gronk here. So it comes down to kind of Baldwin and uh, Jarvis and Corey Davis for us because we're going to try to keep the running backs out of this, even though I don't hate taking Mixigan, Mixigan, Mixigan. <laughs> Mixon, Howard, or McKinnon here to, to get you a second running back. But again, we're going to stick with the receivers here. So it comes down to I kind of like the safety of Baldwin here. We got a safe Keenan Allen. Baldwin's a little old. Uh, but you know he's you can you can mess with him because you know he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Jarvis again. There's there's obviously a fair amount of mouths to feed over there in um, Cleveland. In Cleveland, but Jarvis will probably be pretty steady. I don't see, you know, he might not be where he quite was last year, but I don't think there'll be a ginormous drop off. And 
maybe Josh Gordon's out of here after this season or, or somebody else leaves and there's, you know, I, I have no problem taking Jarvis Landry. I think he's incredibly safe here. What do you guys think? I mean, I can't agree more. Jarvis is when I'm on the clock and I don't know what to do and Jarvis is there, it feels very good just to grab that dude and put that consistency and safeness on my team. Been on his jock for a while and it just <laughs> never stops. And when he went over to Cleveland, I mean, yeah, it was a little bit of a bummer, I guess, just because of the stink that Cleveland has around it. But, I mean, I, they're on the up. I feel like there's nowhere else to go but up. <laughs> and then, you know, we're going to talk about Josh Gordon a little bit later, so I don't want to get into too much of that. But then, you know, this news about Josh Gordon not being quite ready for a training camp made me be like, well, I mean, Jarvis could if, – if there's no Josh Gordon there, Jarvis would be, like, awesome. I would have no reservations whatsoever – um, but I mean, we're, you just got to let that situation play out regardless. I, I would definitely be fine with taking Jarvis here. Um, but we, we elect to we pass little, on Jarvis and then we, we went for some more upside. Kind I, of, I mean, I know big co likes, likes some Baldwin here. So why not? Why not Baldwin here? I mean, I, if you take Baldwin here, I don't think you're messing it up. Right, uh, which is always what uh, we're trying with Baldwin to do. or Jarvis, you're not messing it. I like what Jason said there. If you're getting, if you find yourself on the clock and you're really not sure what to do, taking Jarvis is a is a it's the right answer. Mm-hmm. It's, Jarvis is always a good answer. Um, so is Doug Baldwin. I mean, obviously this is a mock draft and we're not trading picks, so we're stuck at the three six, and then we'll be back around at the four five or something like four seven or four, something seven. like that. So I don't think there's any like, hey, well maybe if I take. You know, Corey Davis here, I can get Baldwin next round, or I can I can trade back. You know, there's no moving around. So we were – I don't mind taking Baldwin, but middle of the third, if you want him, take him. I can't argue yeah. with you. He's. I like I, him a lot better when there's a four in front of his. Oh, in front of that pick. I feel like I'm cheating. Right. You know, and and, it might, and it's usually like the four – you know, you're usually in the beginning of the fourth to get him that late. Right. So, but, you know, he in this mock, he, go, he makes it all the way to 312. So er, late it's three, nothing, early four – I feel like if he's a fourth player on my team, I get I got away with something. Nothing I feel but like sub- somebody's looking for me too in in Seattle. There's, there's nothing yeah. but subtractions as opposed yeah. to you know in so, Cleveland. There's been nothing but additions, mm-hmm. and and there's nobody nobody came in. It's Lockett, it's Baldwin. They got Brandon Marshall and yeah. uh, and Jerron Brown still sit, you know who I don't hate as a late round flyer just because there's no who else is there. So I think we kind of settled on Corey Davis. In my opinion, we settled on Corey Davis in this in this right of as saying Doug Baldwin and maybe and Jarvis Landry probably is a little safer week to week points on your in your starting lineup this season and maybe even next season too as Corey Davis is a young buck getting going in this league but the upside on Corey Davis the right the bottom line like the the guaranteed value in his name right he, you know, top five draft pick or something. Top, what a top seven draft pick, something like that for the yeah, Titans seven. last year. Um, I think Mike Williams was seven. He might have been four. He, yeah, yeah, maybe he was four, or one, three or I'll four. Look it up. So the Corey Davis following is strong. The Matt Lafleur offensive coordinator comes in there and we changes everything up. I, I, I don't see we. And we'll get more into this later with the, some of our next picks. I don't like. I said I don't think that Corey Davis comes in there and outscores Jarvis Landry or Doug Baldwin this season. But Corey Davis just feels like that prime asset right and he feels good like we're 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 doing something unnor unnor not normal for me yeah just to be making these picks anyway and i it feel i like having Corey davis yeah. on my team i usually am not in a position to even have Corey davis as be really even considered on most in most of my drafts because i'm looking elsewhere at this right. point like That's i'm looking I mean. at that mckinnon howard guys uh kind of deal right now um so to be looking at Corey Davis, and we've talked about the Titans and that offense and what's what we think's about to happen, and I'm going to be chasing a lot of Titans players around uh, this this offseason, whether it's in redraft uh, or uh, dynasty or startups or in an existing dynasty. Like I'm just going to go try to feel out and try to get as many of these Tennessee players as I can because I do believe this offense is going to have take a big jump and be kind of electric, and Corey Davis be in the – possible focal point of of that offense and really what it comes down to is to me like Corey Davis when we were evaluating him last year like to me he was like he just had this kind of T.O. kind of Terrell Owens ticked off just (laughs) stink about him like not that he was a he's not that he was a bad guy just his performance on the field and how muscular he was and the ball yeah Yeah. he's just a nasty mean dude who could easily be an alpha number one I think like I said, oh, yeah. I like this offense. I like Mariota. I like the offensive coordinator. Uh, there's, I think there's tons of Corey Davis upside. And then, like you mentioned, like 
He's only been in the league a year. The here. floor is super he safe. Had, just on the right. The floor and the dynasty value, value. You know, we talked about Devonte Parker. He's right. still that's just exactly a what sixth round pick. Like, right. and that's worst case scenario. That's the worst it's ever been for Parker. He's four this years in the league year. now. Right, and he's at like sixty in the sixties in this draft. I think he went at like five, five six three. or something like five, five three, three in this mock. So that's we're kind of going on that of with Corey Davis here. Right, kind of the same pedigree kind of guy coming out everyone loved him i think parker was like a top he was parker was 17th i think right. Corey davis was the fifth pick all right in uh, 17 and you know we but he showed you some flashes too in right. a couple of games last year you go back and watch the couple of the games where he got a bunch of targets and made some catches he was showing you everything you wanted to see the route running the the press coverage beating the the skying up in the air and making plays that no, yeah. no one else can make and well, you saw him finally be healthy at the end of the season, I think, against the Rams and just lit it up. Two touchdowns in the playoffs, um, obviously playing from behind, but got him anyway. And, and scorched and, Malcolm and, and, Butler. And Corey, as far as the Devontae Parker comparison and, and the cult following and the love and everything, like Corey Davis walks into the NFL as a much, much higher ty- type of dominant player than as good right. as as good as Devontae Parker was. Like, I don't think anybody would argue with you that Corey Davis doesn't walk in as a potential better pro. Right. Maybe, Corey but Davis I mean, you were, still get, you were still getting Devontae Parker comparisons to A.J. Green, so that's pretty high praise. Oh, it is high praise, but Corey Davis, just like that upper-level physicality but, but from Corey be, Davis. He could be up in the Odell right. Nuke and conversation that's the point. is where you're exactly. thinking. That's you know, the exactly. point right there is that, that I can – there's a couple ways that his value could drop a little bit. But really, there's almost nowhere for it to go but up at this right. point. It could be a round or two down, but it for could. the most part. But then you get that third year. He's going to be the third year in the league next year, and that's that third-year bump that all the wide receivers get because that's used to be – it took that long before you saw anything from these guys. Right. And so he's still going to ha- – Hold some value there. He's people love this dude, and this is the first year in a new system. New It'll offense. be completely different than the whole team ran last year. So they they might they even come a, out and sputter for a week or three to get going, and you know, so you get a whole healthy off season as well, which is something that he, he didn't you know, have, wasn't able to couldn't have even last compete year. in the combine. Maybe last the best year. point made yet is that he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> is that he wasn't even healthy to get right. started last year. Right. For, I mean, for a lot. And then he got re-aggravated. And exactly. Was when, even when he was on the field doing some good stuff and looking not so good at times, let's, let's be honest. But it was because he wasn't right. Yeah. Right. Like, just doesn't go away. It's a bit lingered. <laughs> All right. We're going we're to linger in too long on this pick. Let's, uh, we took Corey Davis here at 3-6. At so we had a kind of a safe team here. I like DJ as a safety factor. I like Keenan as a safety factor. Took a swing on maybe a little bit more upside and yeah. and, and uh, huge turn, uh, return on investment with, with Corey Davis at 3-6. That's a fun pick. Right. It's a great pick. We all felt good about it. We were mm-hmm. like, oh, I can't, yeah, you know what? I do want Corey Davis on my team. <laughs> yeah, I want to see his name on my roster. Right. Maybe Jarvis maybe would have been a smarter pick. But I like I like the safeness in the, in the swing. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We're fine. Everything is good here. Okay. (laughs) So 12 picks go off the board. Bummer and Doug Baldwin goes. uh, Geis goes. Ertz goes. Landry. Howard McKinnon. All the guys we were contemplating. So we kind of fall into like almost an odd odd no man's land here early on in this process. Um, And we kind of whittle it down to... Uh, actually, two quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson, still on the board. So we start looking at those guys because we don't really love the running back situation that's left on the board. It's basically, I think we got like a Sony Michelle and um, here I got you, Derek, Derek Henry. Henry. Yeah, because Mark so Ingram. We quickly realized that our strategy is correct <laughs> in going running back early because there's some wide receivers there that we don't mind having at all, but we really don't need any of them, right. and we don't that that group of running backs we don't even want to touch well this is you know what i was saying when we were doing the running back thing is you see these those top 12 13 you know 14 15 six like i want the top 12 13 i really want those guys i want two of them if i can and then yeah. i want to take my third guy as one of these guys in this range from yeah you know the, the, the Devonte 14 Freeman, to, to darius know, guys area yeah to 17 yeah those kind of guys there and then you're left with taking a bunch of other swings. And I like plenty of other guys. Like, I like your Drakes and your Chubbs and your Rookies and and your Alex Collins. But it's just, it's not as... It's not as fun when that. they're not the third, right. fourth, or fifth guy on your running back, on your list. And right. you're like, ha ha, look at me. And right. you're like, oh, well, I, I, wait, I need, I this, need guy? this guy? I need this guy to be good? So it comes down to Derrick Henry 
a Rod Wilson, which you know we almost never talk about that in the fourth. Well, we've we've done some quarterback discussing though in the early rounds, and Josh Gordon. We got Josh Gordon. This we did this draft far previous to oh, at least a week before the, all this Josh Gordon stuff came out. We've been sitting on this draft for a minute, um, so that this news that whatever had Josh Gordon has going on wasn't out. Right. Um, so we. Me and Jay Wayne were talking about maybe Aaron Rodgers because when you talk about the quarterback position, it's kind of like the Le'Veon Bell thing where you're talking about Aaron Rodgers and who else. But the only other else is typically Russell Wilson. Sometimes Cam's up there and you get other guys who, who get up in that upper stratosphere of quarterback points. But, you know, yeah, and, and now I think the conversation can be the I, I can make an argument for Deshaun Watson and Carson Wentz. So if to me it's you got the big four now. Obviously Luck is around and Cam is around, but I think you got the big four, A Rod, Carson Wentz, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson. In this draft, Deshaun Watson's going in the second round, which made Boom. made Jay Wayne very happy to see. I know. And, and, and Jay Wayne and Casey wanted to start talking about Aaron Rodgers because we didn't feel like we even knew who to pick. We were like, right. you know, if they were like, well, Josh if all Gordon else, was risky before all this stuff happened. Right. And, if all else fails, do we take the quarterback and give ourselves the advantage? And I and, just don't bless it up. Right. Yeah. So I'm saying, and so my my thing was. I can't. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not going to go in that rabbit hole about not taking quarterbacks at all. And you know, till the last. Yeah, pick everyone knows stuff. our stance on. Yeah, you know that already for the most but, part. So if I am going to do the running the quarterback early stuff, um, or early and or in a spot like Casey said, where you feel like you're in a kind of a no man. So I let me grab a good quarterback and just get my anchor. I'm. I'm personally. I would take Russell Wilson over A. Raj. and I know that's hot, and I know that's fiery it's take. Not, it's not that hot. It's just it's I've, I've said it once. I've said it twice. I've said it three times. Like A. Rod's clavicles got issues. <laughs> well, at this point, there's multiple bolts in there. There's a lot of duct tape. <laughs> and that's Casey LOLs. Like I'm going to take. I'm. I'm not stepping in here in the fourth. Obviously, I don't think anybody's taking. Deshaun Watson is the flavor of the week, and he's he's and Carson <laughs> Wentz too. Now that he's back out there running around. I don't think anybody's going to take Russell Wilson over A. Rodge. So if you feel the need, and sometimes A. Rodge goes or Deshaun like Deshaun Watson will go, and then there's a whole nother round before anybody breaks that seal again. Yeah. And so if you want to wait, if you want to get a good quarterback, I can't. I, I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I'm done arguing. But I would take Russell Wilson over A. Rodge, and I love Carson Wentz and Deshaun Watson sounds fun. Yeah. Just maybe, maybe just take the last one of those four. Sure. You know? Just don't be the don't open the can. Just be the last, <laughs> be the guy that gets a, well, one of those four, get the last yeah. one and be fine. But if you have my back against the wall and you're like, well, I have to take quarterback here because I don't like anybody else. I'm taking Russell Wilson over A-Rodge because of the, the health issues with A-Rodge. I mean, that's fair. Plus, Russell's a little younger and not too far off of what Aaron Rodgers has been doing maybe even you know a little well, bit more with the, the legs yeah, exactly it takes his combination with legs to get the the stats that that aaron Rodgers gives you as far as a you know like his arm his arm and the the score that you get from the fantasy points Sneaky athletic from aaron Rodgers as well oh, yeah he he's has extending tons drives of, tons of third and short he's running a lot yeah of right. first downs and, and i i have no problem taking a quarterback here because we're in no man's land and we put it right. up you that's know, the only reason i had this conversation again when why, why we've had these conversations in these drafts is because we i do feel like i get when this happens this is the only time where i even consider drafting an early quarterback right and i would definitely go i'm going aaron Rodgers over russell wilson i have no no uh, worries about this clavicle. I mean, if you get tackled wrong, you're going to get hurt. And I'm, I'm, I'm with you, too. They're about to make him pay, the highest paid player in the history of anything. Well, they don't have a choice. What are they going to do? We're like, oh, we're scared of your scared of your clavicle. Uh, we're going to go to Brett Hundley now. I'm not I'm not super worried about the clavicle <laughs> either. I don't mind taking Aaron Rodgers. They don't have to pay him, but they're going to. I mean, but we oh, inevitably we inevitably don't take a quarterback here. So it comes down to Josh Gordon and Derrick Henry. Um <sighs> Which makes the quarterback sound a little bit better right. when you put it like that. It makes him sound a lot better, which That's is why we were where considering it came from. <laughs> when we were talking about Derrick Henry, everybody was like, hey, uh, we'd rather have a quarterback than putting Derrick Henry on our roster. And it's just like, you know, if the things if things go right for the Titans, he and he and Deion Lewis both are going to be scoring points. Derrick Henry crushed it in the playoffs last year. Like he you can see and he's only 24 like dude dude's a stud he's a beast he's a, he's a stud athlete pound for pound he might be one of the best athletes just to be able to move like he does mm -hmm. at what 238 pounds or something 47. crazy 247 he's a six mac three. truck yeah. six three he's a mac truck he's so, cam newton just three inches <laughs> yeah. shorter 
Yeah, so I, don't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Derrick Henry. No. It just doesn't feel good. I like Derrick Henry a whole lot more in real football this year Yeah, of what's about to happen with the Titans. And like I said, I like buying these pieces of this offense. I'm not buying uh, Derrick Henry here at 4-7. I would be trying to trade for Derrick Henry and put him on my team and just see what happens. Maybe somebody's not super stoked about that situation. I don't um, mind having Derrick Henry. I just don't necessarily want to take him here. I think you're going to get... Probably solid RB2 production out of Henry most of the season. Here. I love with, that with argument. With the TDs being your the huge crutch kicker. to lean on. There's such a big difference between startup value and existing draft value. I mean, existing league value. You got a team. You got 20, 25, 30 players on your team, and you can mess around with a Derrick Henry, this or that, wherever his value may be. But if you're starting a new league and Derrick Henry has to be the fourth person on your roster – that scares the heck right. out of me. Makes my palms way more it's sweaty. Just, just like just like Casey was saying at the end of the year last year, he was talking about it. It's like, why did the Titans continue to give um, DeMarco. DeMarco Murray the rock over and over again as he was injured and not feed it to Derrick Henry? There's something going on there. And Could maybe, have been the coach. Maybe that, yeah, exactly. Maybe the new coach has come in, clean slate. Obviously, Murray, Murray's retired. It's Derrick Henry. They brought in Deion Lewis. The coach Champ comes in, his first order of business, offensive coordinator brings in another running back who has the PPR upside. Right. There That's, is virtually no PPR upside with, with uh, Henry that you see right off the rip. Like, it's just, exactly. it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean it can't happen. He's yep. perfectly capable of he catching football. He can catch. And but it's just, it's not happening. And he hasn't been the workhorse. Not until and Deion so Lewis just, gets hurt. Right. Right, so I just think... I mean, he'll get some dump downs. I mean, I'm he, sure he will. I mean, I'm just not... And like, he's a threat to take it to the house anytime he touches the ball. Right. There's not a ton of evidence supporting the PPR floor for Derrick Henry. I think he's got like a career total of... It's not too many. It's not great. But it, I'm not... I'm not again, but it looked decent when he I'm, was doing it. I'm, he can catch the ball. It's not like he doesn't have hands. And he's taking screens to the house like, whoa. He's, he's he can do that. One long screen to the house. <laughs> he's taking other screens not to the house, but long. Um... So he caught I don't him know. sleeping. They were like, "Oh, they threw it to him." <laughs> my, uh, I had a bad kind of taste in my mouth from Derrick Henry from last year, and and it was for everything he stated. Like Demarco Murray was going out there hurt, and they're still giving him the rock instead of just feeding Derrick Henry. And then for some reason, I had a a bad notion that he performed well at the end of the year when he got his shot. Because if you look at the stat line versus uh, J the Jaguars in Week 17, he had 28 carries for 51 yards. It's a terrible yards per carry if you do the math there. Um, he did have that. Easy six, math. He did have that sixty-six yard touchdown catch, though. Um, and but like looking at the cutups of that game, he was getting good yardage. Like he must have just gotten stuffed a bunch for negative yards, and then a lot of a lot, there was a lot of good runs against that defense, and they won the game. And he he carried them into the playoffs, single handedly beat the Chiefs. Had a ridiculous game against them. I, when I look, went back and watched it, I thought it looked a lot better than what I remember. Um, Trying to break it down a little bit, the Titans were 14th in rushing attempts last year with 444. Derrick Henry had 176. DeMarco had 184. Mariota's getting you 60. Matt LaFleur comes in from the Rams. They had 454 rushes last year, so not too many more. Um, Deion Lewis, who comes in, as you mentioned, had 180 rushes last season for the Patriots, which I think has got to be way more than he's going to get this year. Um, he's never broken 100 carries in any other season. Um, did have 32 catches. He also hasn't played through any other season, I don't think. Well, there's another decent yeah. point for why I don't feel as bad about putting Henry on my team is because I don't have a ton of confidence that Deion Lewis is going to finish and play every game, and I don't think that they're going to feed him the rock too much. I don't think he's seeing 10 carries a game. I could see Derrick Henry getting – I mean, if he averages four yards a carry, which he's done in his career throughout it, and he gets – I mean, is 250 carries too many? You yes. think that's too many? Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't see why he can't get 250 carries. I mean, 250. I mean, he's ba he's best ba basically workhorse role. I don't think he gets. 250 I don't think. I don't carries. think that's happening. One. I, I don't think. I think there's a decent touchdown upside here. Is what's saving your day with? with he Henry. had five last year. Derek Demarco Murray had yeah. six. He's got but all the goal line work coming towards him now. I think you'll see Deion Lewis getting. You know, eight to twelve carries a game, plus the plus a lot more of the versatility and PPR. And there isn't a better uh, pass blocking running back than Deion Lewis. He was up at the top of the pass blocking efficiency. So just another reason for Deion Lewis to not come off the field, um, and and his versatility may, maybe being a little better than Derrick Henry's. And now, I'm not again. I don't hate Derrick Henry the player at all. I think he'll be all right. I wish he was probably a little closer to the workhorse role to take him here, and he'd probably be a little higher if he was. 
But I'm just going to wait. If I want a piece of this backfield, I'm just going to wait a couple rounds and take Deion Lewis. That's been a popular thought. And I think Jay, Ray- Jay Wayne's on, like, I, this is when this argument was going down on this pick and it was the big, you know, the question about what's going on with Derrick Henry and the Titan, I'm, uh, the Titans offense and everything. Like, there's just things, we, there's no precedent for this. You know, I mean, LaFleur comes from the Rams and all that. Obviously, he's got uh, the Todd Gurley stats from last year nobody would argue that there's a titans running back as talented as todd Gurley on the team we don't know if they're going to be alternating series and if they are then derrick henry gets the third down he probably runs off for Deion lewis if leo Deion lewis has his own series he's in there for a second third down like who who we don't know what's going on with the titans offense until we see it and this is another one of those things like the startup is so much fun because there's things that you don't know and you'll be three, four weeks into the season before you're like, oh, definitely should have taken Derrick Henry in the fourth right. round. Or three or four weeks into the season, you might be like, ooh, dodge that bullet. <laughs> you know, but you, you just don't yeah, know. Right. And I can see, I can get on board with what stuff, with some stuff that Jay's saying. He crushed the the uh, Chiefs in the playoffs. I can get on board with stuff that Casey's saying going back to last year. It's like, why, why, why did he not get more play when DeMarco was hurt and they kept getting, giving it to, you know, the ineffective DeMarco Murray. So there's so much there that you just don't know, but we have to know that we don't know it. So going into this, you just don't know. And maybe does that, did that push us to who we really took? So we didn't take Derek. Well, I think, you know, Jay Wayne probably was maybe lobbying for a little bit more of Derek Henry here. Um, and then me and me and Big Co kind of said, we're going to take a swing on the upside of what Josh Gordon could give us. Um, cause again, we're going a little wide receiver heavy, but we definitely were trying to maybe look at the running back here. We just, it was kind of barren and Derrick Henry's right. best available. Mark Ingram's there four game suspension. When he comes back, I think Mark Ingram's going to be great. He was one of the better backs in the league last year. Killed it. Um, but uh, you know, you hate to see a 28 year old suspended for four games and then probably out of there next season. Possibly, yeah, maybe. You know? Who knows? So we end up going with Josh Gordon again. This was before all, any of that all happened. Any of this, you know, him I'm not, not showing being up at the training, training camp. camp. Um, so do, what do you we what do you make? Do you make anything of that? You guys want to talk about that for a second? Well, the one thing I just saw was Josh Gordon. It kind of I think he was maybe trying to keep that part quiet. But somebody said that he did it just because he didn't want to be On around hard knocks. the hard knocks, the cameras and all right. that stuff. And so I, I obviously I'm have no link into this right. issue. I have no personal needs. I have no sources on this. Like, <laughs> I think if that's the case and Gordon just, that there was that thing on Twitter that somebody saw him working out in the Florida Gators, yep. you know, stadium or whatever, went off that's, on it. that nobody could be, so nobody was around. He's still working out. Like, it obviously sucks for him not be with the team and getting the reps and all that stuff. But you saw George, Josh Gordon step on the field last year after like, what, 700 days off or something yeah. like that and be the best player on the field. So like I'm not worried about his game. Every the only thing that anybody's working worried about here is his head and his right. potential drug test. Did he fail a that. test? Did he they not fail no. a test? Right. They, they say, say no, they say they say that he didn't fail any tests and did he miss a test? Right. So they're saying there's no problems with the league right now and this is all just a part of the plan. And if I mean I hope so for the guy. I did I watched that little fifteen minute video on YouTube about his story and stuff. Like I he seems like he's giving it the go the real go so i mean if it's really just staying out of the cameras yeah. and wanting to be out of the limelight good for him i, I guess good for him but i, I don't understand it like I, just, I don't understand I don't, it i don't like it at all at first it was like very uneasy i, I the, the not wanting to be on the hard knocks kind of makes it feel a little bit better but why like, i just don't but I, why I don't, yeah i don't understand that though like why the rest of your team's there it's not like you know that's like you oh, don't hard have knocks to talk here. to we're them about, we're about it's just a non-stop party the whole time they're here and you don't how have to right. talk how to can them? i not drink with hard knocks is here i know, you know how can yeah, i not smoke not, a blunt with hard knocks not like, like they're not I, passing out shots when hard knocks cameras are around i don't get that part but again i'm not there right. i don't know and and the way this the team spun seems, it was seems like, like a they, convenient excuse right there's no chance that this doesn't make me feel a little bit scarier oh, about makes me him. feel terrible about this pick right oh yeah there's no chance that this Henry. <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make you feel better so like if you're going in if you if your startups are just starting up now you're like you know hey just is i'm not saying take him off your board but be a little bit more cautious let somebody else take the chance because yeah the chance is great and he could hit hard but it was already rocky and now it's it's just, it's rocky it's it, like a jetty who say, knows say you give Dion lewis 150 carries 
There's still <laughs> we're back to this. Huh? There's <laughs> still almost 300 <laughs> carries to go around. Like you don't think that Derrick Henry can approach 250? I don't. Think I think he can. I think he can get close to a thousand yards and eight to ten touchdowns and have some upside on top of that. If Deion Lewis were to get hurt, there's no way Jay Wayne I'd be was getting out of here without putting totally, that projection out. Uh, hey, Jay Wayne totally was fine. That, that that projection. I don't line think out. he's touching 250. There was no way he wasn't saying that. He'd been waiting for 250, a thousand yards, and six to ten touchdowns. He'd been waiting on that for two weeks. It's, it's, the, it's the TD upside <laughs> that that makes that makes Henry. It counteracts the PPR floor. Fun. But not it doesn't though because pe- every time Deion Lewis catches it, I get a point. Yeah, well, I mean, if he if he gets a thousand yards and ten touchdowns, I, oh, mean, I mean, if he gets a thousand yards and ten touchdowns, I mean, you, you spread it just you just don't know when it's coming. Like that's the PPR floor of Deion Lewis. You put him in your lineup and he gets you ten to fifteen points a week and you feel better, all that good stuff. But maybe, you know, I just. I just feel like the, we needed a running back here because we've already taken two wide receivers. Oh, we need a running back. I was back. freaking out, we but need that a running wasn't back, the exercise. But I don't, don't want to put Derrick Henry on my team just because I need a running back at this point. I'll just wait for Deion Lewis, and, uh, and I'll take another swing on somebody else. Probably should have gone A-Raj, but whatever. Here we go. <laughs> we, went, we went Josh Gordon. Watch that thing go off the board. 12 picks are going to fly off. I like kind of kind of like picking in the, in the middle of the round. You know, you get a stab at everybody. The turn at the end of the first is the best, but I like the turns. But the middle's not bad because you don't have such yeah. a long way. Uh, it's it's I don't. There's not a bad spot really. I mean, it's it's. I love the turns because you. I like to have two in a row or two out of four picks. But then when you drop eighteen players, it sucks. Yeah. All right. So we're at pick five seven here. Is that right? C. Um. So. We took Josh Gordon on the last pick. Now the receiver on our team here. No, 4-7. Yeah, we took, we took uh, so we're at 5-6. We took Josh Gordon at 4-7. Sorry about that. Um, so we're at 5-6 here. We got some running backs on the board. We got Sonny Michelle still out there. We got Chubb still out there. Some rookies. Rashad Penny, Ronald Jones. Basically, the, all the rookies are still on the board. Who am I missing? Darius Geis and Saquon obviously are gone. So right. we're still looking at Tevin look, Coleman. Looking at Sony Michelle, Rashad Penny, so Nick a, Chubb, Ronald Jones. A decent stack of RBs here, essentially. Um, and then you have Golden Tate, Marvin Jones, Demarius Thomas as some more wide receivers for your pleasure. Um what do you guys think here? I know we, we kind of got into you guys kind of wanted Sony Michelle on this team. We have Sony Michelle as the you know higher r- ranked rookie than all the other rookies left on the board. At Big Co and Jake Wayne do. I like Nick Chubb more than I like Sony Michelle. Um, so th- I don't know if I'm ready to make that call yet. I think I like Nick Chubb more than I do Sony, but I feel like Sony's about to give you more immediately. So yeah, it's a tough. It's a Chinese riddle. I mean. <laughs> I love I love Nick Chubb. The situation's tough. You know, who knows what's going to happen with Carlos Hyde there and how that distribution of carries and targets goes with Duke Johnson getting re-upped. Sony Michelle gets the first round draft pedigree, obviously, comes into the Patriots and uh if he moves right into the Deion Lewis role plus because he's, you know, a better player, uh could be magic. It's right. just it's just hard and it's hard to tell. Like I I you know, I think back when we broke down the running backs to begin with, at the very, very beginning of the preseason or of the you know the off season right after Super Bowl, we started looking at rookie running backs and stuff. I mean, it was Sony Michelle, Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle after Darius Geis, and I think we're still at that spot. Um, obviously, some people want to put Penny up there, but for us, it was always Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb. We're still I I still don't know how to answer that question. I think just based on draft capital situation and what's going on. Uh, there's nobody in new England as good as Duke Johnson and, um, you know, Carlos Hyde. So I feel, I feel like, especially for this team, you know, if, if we were, and right. I, if well, we, and that's where if we my, had, if we had gone three or four running back, three running right. backs already. And it was like, all right, did we want to, our bonus player here, here is Sony or Nick. I wouldn't mind putting Nick on the bench and just being like, "Hey, I got a, I got a stud that I don't even need." And but if you need points, then right. I just feel like Sony Michelle is probably a better spot. And that's that's my swing on this uh, pick here of being okay with kind of taking Sony Michelle here. I guess go, I got outvoted, so cat's out of the bag. <laughs> um, but on this team, the way it's being built and and the running backs left, like I can I can see how. Sony could be very useful on this style of team, getting you points in that running back two uh, spot. 
Yeah, and let's face it, Sony Michelle may come out there and be absolutely ridiculous, or he, he may he be just be, part of the committee, he, the he, Patriots right, committee. That, well, that's the that, that's the thing that worries me. But they me picked him about, in the first round. I don't sure, s- sure they did, but I mean, he comes out and he fumbles a couple of times, like he's there's so much in, yeah. in, in past, and he he gets in the doghouse for some reason. Like Rex Burkhead's still over there. They still have uh, James White, James White, and Jeremy Hill. Like there's there's options and there, Gil. and Gillisley. Like there there are some options there, and Sony Michelle is very electric. I like. I like Sody Michelle just fine. It's not like he caught a ton of balls right. in college either, but he had he was kind of like penciled in as kind of a pass catcher, but it really it wasn't like some crazy no. amount of passes caught. Um, but for this team, I I can see that. Um, I guess you know I I like the talent of Chubb better. I'm not taking Chubb obviously for points this year. I think in a pinch he probably could be startable, and we don't know how it's going to play out. Just like you said with the Derrick Henry thing, we don't know how the backfield in Cleveland's going to play out at all yet. We got to see. It'll be clear. But I like Chubb down the line. I like his talent more than I like Sony Michelle. I like him being kind of pegged more into a workhorse role than Sony Michelle maybe ever will be. I think Nick Chubb, if he doesn't get injured, he's right up there with uh, Saquon Barkley and talent and all that other kind of stuff. So I love what Nick Chubb could do. I get it not taking him here, and maybe he sticks around for another round or two and you could stab at him. Right, and looking at the list, he's four running backs down. Right. Sony Michelle's the next one on the top of the list. But here's – so we do end up – they've uh, outvote me on Sony Michelle, but I maybe my, my kind of take here was maybe I go ahead and I take a Golden Tate or a Demarius Thomas here, get those for sure catches because we're building this wide receiver heavy team right now. And and because we do kind of have Corey Davis and Josh Gordon, who we're relying on our receivers right now to win ball games, basically. And instead of having the risk of maybe Corey Davis and Josh Gordon not quite panning out where we yes. need them to be, you could yes. take a Golden Tate or a Demarius Thomas and feel real safe about what you got, and then maybe be starting bolster Josh Gordon the strength. Right. That could, that that goes right that that goes right back to the running back strategy, where it's like if I get Devonte Freeman as my third running back, good luck beating me. And just like what Casey's saying here, we got Keenan Allen, who doesn't feel good about right. that. Got Corey Davis, that's fun. Josh Gordon could be one of the best receivers in the league, but between Corey Davis being a young receiver in a new offense and maybe not being the best week to week option, and Jordan Josh Gordon is one problem away from not playing. Casey's saying add a strength to a strength and go get Golden Golden Tater Demarius Thomas and bring add in a good another constant in there. Bring in another late WR one, high end WR two at a minimum. Safe floor. And it's exactly safe floor, decent ceiling, and, and pad that team up and just take some risk out of this pick. And I couldn't agree more with the option. Like that is a viable option to make this pick here. So I think that's what I would have done in this situation. So in this instance, for the safeness, you would go Tate over Marvin Jones? Uh, I would probably Golden Tate or, or Demarius Thomas here. Oh, I, see, I said that. I've, I've always, I'm always a Marvin Jones over Golden Tate guy. I don't, I don't mind. But now once I, once I notice, I look around and I see Marvin Jones on a bunch of my teams. Right. I've acquired him twice this offseason, drafted him in a startup last year. You start to look at diversification and, and I think Demarius Thomas for it, me because I don't have him anywhere. Again, like I think that Marvin Jones is just fine. I think he's going to be great. I just know that there's going to be a bunch of catches at Golden Tate's yes. disposal and probably Demarius Thomas as well. I think he was st- like he was terrible last year and he was still like wide receiver 16. Who's Demarius Thomas? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and Demarius Thomas has had way more wide receiver one seasons than Golden Tate. Probably taking Demarius Thomas here. I think Case Keenum's going to crush. And with the stats and the splits going around, you know, obviously, if Kenny Galladay has a go- coming right. out party, Galladay coming out party doesn't hurt Golden Tate. It hurts Marvin Jones. Right. I mean, as bad as it was for Demarius, he had 140 targets, caught 83 of them for 949 yards and five touchdowns. Right. right. That's JV a bad quarterback. That's, that's as bad as it gets. Right. So now he's got a very serviceable, at worst quarterback, he's just serviceable. Case Keenum. So we we do we I get outvoted. We take Sony here, um, and we're gonna see what happens when when we roll the dice here, and maybe maybe we can even put Chubb on this team. Yeah, and on if, the next go round. When, when, if when people get cute with young and rookies and upside in your startup drafts this year, pay attention to Demarius Thomas. If Demarius Thomas his his ADP is already low. But if he continues, if he slips based on a couple of people going and taking some young guys, all right, you know, they get a little fancy with some tight ends or get really, if there's a quarterback run, I think Demarius Thomas could be the best value and one of the best values in your draft. Yeah, I agreed 100%. Um, so we take Sonny Michelle, and guess what? Nick Chubb's still there. Nick Chubb hangs around. So we're, like Big Co said, people are getting cute in startups with, with rookies. We're, we're about to get cute in a startup with some rookies. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we, we took Sonny Michelle, which is, you know, we were arguing for 
Derrick Henry being an RB2, Sony Michelle with some PPR upside, being our RB2 coming in and hopefully getting us some RB2 production that we need with untapped upside that we're not 100% sure about with Sony Michelle. Um, and then Nick Chubb's still hanging around. Who's my guy? I like Chubb. Um, this would have been an interesting argument. Demarius Thomas goes right in front of us. Golden right. Tate goes two picks in front of us. Didn't even have to have those arguments. Those picks play it fell off. Rojo and, goes. Yep. So, Penny goes. Right. We're. At that I would po- take Chubb over both of those guys though. So, I mean, maybe not on this team where I need a starter. I, maybe I'll go Rojo. But for the most part, I want Chubb all day long. I'm, I'm willing to wait. I'll draft another running back. To You're start taking this position. Rojo over Penny. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe on this. I'm just saying, I know you just just said that. It's just... I don't know. It'd be a a a coin flip for me. Tough call. Because I don't... Penny's not my favorite. Yeah. Um, But on this team right now... Chris Carson's getting a lot of love right now. now I need a starter. I'm pretty sure. I mean, we're thinking that Penny's going to be the for sure workhorse. But a lot of Chris Carson talk right now. Yeah. Um, And then you... Rojo, I don't don't think anybody's taking anything away from Rojo. But... And I like the explosive factor in Rojo's game. But it's neither here nor there right now. Zoom, baby. Um, who else can run a four six with a pulled hammy? <laughs> so we basically come down to Chubb, Shepard, Woods, Will Fuller, um, Drake, and Ajay, Coleman, all available as well. Um, so we're heavy invested in the receivers already. We liken Sterling Shepard or Robert Woods. We're hoping that maybe one of those guys kind of sticks around, and we're gonna roll the dice on another rookie running back here. Um, and we're gonna stick with Nick Chubb and, and what could be. And I mean, I, I do believe that there'll be parts of the season where you'll see that it's clear that Nick Chubb's startable I I, I think I I think it could happen very quickly that he's obviously the best running back on the team and they could you know start to hedge him some more some more carries and it but with with the other options obviously you got Duke Johnson who's a stud pass I just think Carlos Hyde so uh, Carlos Carlos Hyde is a good NFL running back so so underrated so underrated um, but uh, just you know, think about what's happened to the Seahawks running backs the last two or three years since Marshawn left. Like they've been down to peanuts after two or three weeks. Right. You know, it could be two or three weeks. It, it could. I mean, and it could be Nick Chubb. The Carlos one has had plenty of injuries. Carlos too. could be standing by himself after three weeks. Duke Johnson could be standing by himself after three weeks. Nick Chubb could be standing by himself. You don't know what right now. Right. It just looks horribly muddy. You can't see to the bottom. You know, nothing. No, can't see through that water. Nothing transparent about that situation. But couple injuries whoever whichever one's the last one standing would be dynamite especially with with uh either one of those quarterbacks really tyrod's going to give you that yeah that threat of a of run of a quarterback and that i'm not going to turn it over we're going to get every every snap we can get out of these drives all the way down the field and then you got baker who could be awesome when he gets in there so i love the browns running game it's just the quantity is killing you right now. Yeah. It's and and the problem is it's quantity full of quality. If it was just three if it was two bums and a good guy, then you were like, all right, well it won't take long for them to figure out who's the best. Right. But and just like we love, like you said, if Nick Chubb didn't get hurt, we might be talking about him. We were talking about him like pre Saquon. Mm-hmm. He was Saquon right. before he got hurt. So Nick Chubb could be by far and away the best running back, even no no matter how good Carlos Hyde is. Carlos Hyde's a really good professional right. running back, just like you said, very underrated. Nick Chubb could come in there and just dwarf him. But if he doesn't right away, and and Duke Johnson's proven. Yeah. Dude's got the most and catches. Paid. Well, yeah, proven and paid. So it's just tough over there. But I love putting I love putting Nick Chubb on my team in a rookie draft to an established team, and I love putting Nick Chubb on my startup if I've already got some play. I'm not going to reach for him in a startup just because I like him. You can't do it. Mm-mm. So we end up taking Nick Chubb here at 6'6". Six, six. I believe this is 6'7". Six, 6'7", six, yeah. seven. Six, seven, sorry. Yep. Um, and we roll the dice on Robert Woods and, and or Will Fuller kind of coming back to us here because we want one of those guys. And Which they did. They do. Um so Will Fuller or Robert Woods, and then Drake kind of in the conversation here because we are hurting that running back. So, well, let's let me start pause with- real quick and say we feel like we're hurting at running back. But the way this thing's worked out, we got three good receivers, and we got David Johnson and two speculative rookies who you know Sony may like we said might be stepping right into prime time play and may may be part of a committee there's some we feel like we got questions at running backs but some people are going to look at this team right here and be like that's exactly what I'm talking about we don't you don't have to go for running backs to get started so it's yeah. it's it, it's not a terrible looking team it feels bad to us because of the way like right feels now yucky. the last we don't two, have stud running backs in our flex spot that's why this team doesn't feel as or good or in my me. second spot right exactly right. So, unknown and so it's an unknown 
Stone. Sony could be a stud. He could be a top. He could be a top eight running back. It could happen. So it, we just don't know. So I just wanted to say that it's like it feels tough for us, but you know we're going to continue to build this team out and see what we can make out of it. But it's fun to have Corey so, Davis. So Robert Woods or Will Fuller. So this is a tough one. It's a tough one for me. I think in my rankings, I got I got Will Fuller one spot above Bobby Woods. Uh, it's hard to maybe just for the simple fact that Will Fuller's the two and and Robert Woods is the two A maybe. And so he's got Cooper Cup there as another guy to kind of fight for targets with. Both are explosive offenses that that could easily lead the league in scoring. So I don't know that you can really go wrong here. Will Fuller might be a little bit more risky, and he's dealt with some injuries. He's getting over some stone hands, but he's had them. And you know he doesn't he doesn't play every right. game. Um, Robert Woods just crushed last year and then that feels really good it feels safe to have robert woods on my team we have some riskier yeah. wide receivers as we've mentioned so i have no problem you know building in a little bit of safeness and going robert woods here yeah i mean i, I agree i think like the news is out will fuller's put on 10 15 pounds said it didn't slow him down he's trying to bulk well, he up had a little some bit speed and, to give up if he right, needed to. right it was like a 428 and, or something and, and in different ways through the last two mock drafts that we did i kind of said some of this before but about will fuller there is no guarding there is no defending will fuller if right. deshaun if De, yeah if, if deshaun De, and nuke are out there deshaun and, nuke, do deshaun and nuke are on the field you got you need three guys on nuke and deshaun watson with his legs and his vision is unstoppable if when when he's healthy with will fuller that combination those three guys that combination is filthy as far as the robert woods goes i love robert woods being my second wide receiver so he's cheating to get him as our fourth wide receiver and they do he does have there there are a few more main cogs in that offense but the the distribution of targets last year was so even and the fact that right. the, it's, with, a, it's a scheme with, it is the scheme and the nastiness of todd Gurley and now you replace you replace sammy with cooks and you got the field stretcher who casey likes it you know cooks might be even better at sammy in that role and doing what they want him to do in the ramp so the ramp mcveigh's in there tweaking his proven system perfecting it even and like i said before if robert woods doesn't hurt his shoulder last year and goes through the fantasy playoffs he's two rounds ahead of this because he's getting more love he gets the love he deserves people kind of he might get mixed in people forget about how good he was in that stretch of six or eight games of being just one of the best wide receivers in the game and i think the way mcveigh has that scheme going like it is scheme but woods is more than capable of performing what they want him to do in that scheme and like you said, Jay Wayne, Will, Will Fuller misses some games here and there. Robert Woods did get hurt. But to me, I've taken Robert Woods because I don't think there's any question mark on what's happening. Yeah. And, you know, I just I feel better with Woods, but Will Fuller is fun. I but I would take Woods. I got I got Will Fuller probably. A, I think I would have him ahead of one spot ahead of Robert Woods as well in, in the rankings. On this team, though, like you, like you were saying, uh, there's – a certain safety factor to Robert Woods that I feel good about with the PPR and the and the scheme of what's going on and and he just hey feels <laughs> that plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, these are my plums. This is a plum pick. I feel it in my plums. Uh, Robert Woods just seems safe and on a different team where I didn't have a couple of risky receivers already in the Corey Davis and and Josh Gordon. I would probably roll the dice on will fuller a lot sooner but the cool thing about robert woods is man he's been in the league for this is this will be his sixth season and he's only two years older than uh will fuller here so yeah. like he's been playing a lot of ball like yeah and robert woods had a great year i think it's only going to get better next year and another year with golf well, just, and just think about that though robert woods put in four years with the bills Think about how great his life is right now. Yeah, he's, he's loving in, life. He's in L.A. in a great system where nobody can even come close to guarding him because they're all spread out across the field, and he's running rub routes and crossing routes and catching balls. And Offense is just hums. Uh, offense is humming. Like it's cold he as was, shit in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great he, in L.A. Yeah, he was on a run-first offense that really hardly went anywhere. And other, never you know. got no recognition because he, he's always been a good player. Yeah. Just, you know, he's had good stretches in Buffalo, just hatred because... Right. Robert Woods is all smiles yeah. right now. So we take Robert Woods here at 7-6 over, uh, over Will Fuller, Crowder, and, uh, and Kenyon Drake here. How about Crowder? You, feel, you feeling Crowder over Bobby Woods? I'm taking Bobby Woods, but I can. I'm feeling some Crowder. You can get Crowder later, and Bobby just came off that season. I some mean, people are going. Some people are putting Crowder over Woods. It's not. I, I and can't I, do and it. I can't do it, but I don't blame them. 
I could yeah. put I could put I could put Crowder over Woods. See, I, simply, so it's going to happen because there's 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 who who is taking anything away from Crowder in that right, offense. Right, I can see it. Alex Paulie. Smith to Crowder. I Crowder mean, I like could Paul catch Richardson. 110 punt balls yeah. easy. You're, we're, we've been waiting for Crowder to be the Golden Tate, and hopefully it'll happen this year. As is basically, I'm putting his ceiling up near that kind of range. But Robert right. Woods could be right there. But that's too, the thing so. we're trying to we're waiting for for Crowder to assume this this role. Yeah. Whereas Bobby's already Bobby. Fair, right. You know, Bobby, enough. Bobby. So oh, I'm Bobby over Crowder, but Crowder, if I can get it, if I can go back to back, if I can get Woods and like being on a turn pick or something yeah. like that. I love taking Crowder. Got no problem taking him. Love but it. You can get him a little later. I, I would rather have Bobby at this point. So I think we got to uh, bid big co adieu. Yeah. For the what day. does it do? Adieu. Adios. Well, goodbye. I think that's isn't that like what is wet outside in the morning? <laughs> no, that's just do not uh, adieu. Okay. Gotcha. Adieu. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with just me and Jay Wayne. Bye, Big Co. Womp womp. <laughs> All right. Now we got Big Co gone. Let's get this thing rolling. Get back to this draft. We just took a break. You don't even know that we did, though, because of the technicals. All right. We take Robert Woods. We get another safe wide receiver. Going wide receiver heavy Guy who here. we really like. Guy offers some safety and could replace one of those other guys who maybe aren't quite as safe to start the season to see what happens. And we're on the clock here again at 8-7. What are we thinking here? We're kind of thinking we're, we 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 got a decent amount of receivers. We could use a running back. Um, but we also need the tight end. And Trey Burton's uh, hanging around here. And we like Kyle Rudolph. We like Trey Burton. We wouldn't mind taking a stab at a tight end here. Just filling the roster here. What are you thinking? I, I got no issue taking Trey. Um, I, I, I'm not. I'm surprised that I guess I don't remember why we went Trey over Kyle just to just for the upside and the youth. They're not that. I mean, I guess they're not that off in couple, age. Couple of years. Um, yeah. I mean, I I could easily take Kyle Rudolph over Trey Burton. Um, I like. We got Kyle Rudolph in a new system, new quarterback. So maybe it takes another year to develop. Obviously, Trey Burton is too. Right. So same thing. Um. But I, I like Trey Burton a whole lot here. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I, maybe we should have looked at a running back a little harder just to kind of shore up uh, our running back position, and maybe taking a guy like a like a Kyle, Alex Collins or or Lamar Miller or Kenyon Drake, who we would been like him, been taking him. in a lot yeah, of drafts. Yeah, we've been taking him everywhere. Um, but inevitably, we end up. Deciding on Trey Burton over Kyle Rudolph. We take him. We like a lot of Trey Burton. We like the targets. We've spent multiple hours talking yeah. about why we like Trey Burton so much. Go listen to last week's after show. We got in there some more with it. Uh, so I maybe it's a little irresponsible to take him over Kyle Rudolph, but I'm fine with taking him over Kyle Rudolph. I yeah, I mean, way. this is the spite draft. So right. let's go ahead and get Trey Burton in the eighth for your so, pleasure. <laughs> In redoing that, though, again, I would probably maybe punt the tight end position even a little further. Yeah. See if Burton falls a little more, and maybe I could select him on the next pick and maybe take a, or, or just punt on tight end until I get to the Cook, Austin, Severian, Jenkins range, maybe, um, and, and feel better about taking a, another running back that, that is maybe a little more sure than the Sony Michelle and the Nick Chubb on your team, like a Collins or Lamar Miller or... Kenyon Drake here. So if I if I had a redo, I'd probably take an RB there. How do you yeah, feel about that? I think I think that's probably the safe case, especially if you're if you punt it on running backs early, you know, you don't have the luxury of picking an early tight end. Right. Basically. So we make that pick, Kyle Rudolph falls off, um, Deion Lewis, Kenyon Drake falls off, Lamar Miller falls off. So all guys we were, t I was talking about, maybe I wanted to select on the last pick. Right. Um, but I think that the thought here is that there's still, there's still, there's still a guys decent group left that we wanted. Sure. And maybe we could have had two of them instead of just one. Right. But we knew we were going to get one of those guys on the come around, you know, not, not necessarily come around. We're picking in the middle of each round, yeah. but we knew we'd get one of them. Um, Drake goes off the board, so we didn't have to have the Drake versus carry on Johnson. Uh, Alex debate Collins here kind of deal um so i think this one basically came down to carry on alex collins for us um who do you who do you like more in that situation jay wayne i love alex collins um i think we actually you I do accident accidentally select collins. I accidentally took him um we'll revert this pick here 
I, I I'm fine taking carry on over Alex Collins. I think there's I think carry on maybe has a little bit more of a PPR upside, and with the and, and then being with the Lions where they like to throw the ball a ton and to the backs, uh, maybe it's a it's, it's crowded in both places. Um, usually Alex Collins lasts longer. Um, he does actually go off the board pretty quickly after we make our selection here, but. I mean, I love Alex Collins. It's just, just the image I have of him and just bowling dudes over. Yeah, and can't it was be denied. fantastic. Yeah, it was just, he, just you couldn't tackle him. His ending season totals didn't look like he missed a ton of games, and he did miss a decent amount of games to start the season. And he, then he was kind of limited in the role until he fully kind of right. They didn't took hand him the reins. Right. Yeah, and then they finally did. And then, it, and then his catches started to go up. Right, he was getting was, a few dump downs. Was the. Uh, just the icing on the right. cake. I mean, it was awesome. It was that because that was the only argument against him was that it's just when we're trying to debate whether to start him or not in the gut and, and touchdowns, you know? right? And now and now he he was getting you know two, three, four catches a game, which was awesome. Looked good doing it. Well, He's not had, out there running in, in the slot or anything, no. but and you had you are Kenneth Dixon already left the field with a trainer. Oh, he did. Yeah. So oh man. Maybe uh, that that sh- that balloon is deflating yeah. more and more. Um, but then I heard, so did Legarrette Blunt, yeah. right? And then so, I think yesterday Legarrette, or maybe this morning Legarrette left the field with a trainer. Now it doesn't been necessarily a mean anything. Yeah, maybe he was just ready to go twist <laughs> up. I don't know. Um, but we I, in, inevitably we end up going carry on yeah. over Collins. I think there is some more upside to carry on at the end of the day. Perhaps. Of being maybe a little bit more complete. I like carry on a lot. He's the my fifth running back Right, rookie off the board, fifth for us. rookie off the board for sure. Um, and I, I, it's just hard when you've seen Alex Collins right. run well, over that's, NFL that, players. That's the thing. That's the that's the that's the thing that doesn't make this so easy to just say, "Oh, give me carry on," and don't even think mm-hmm. about it. Because I've seen Collins do it, right? And he he they wouldn't even he earned a spot of getting all of his reps last year, and he right. looked so nasty doing it, right? Um, so I don't really have a problem either way there. Still only twenty three years old, like right. super young. So I. If you want to take Alex Collins, I got no, I can't argue too too much with you. But I mean, if you want to get these rookies, you have to reach for them when you don't know that they're going to be good. You have and to I mean, get them. Like our, we we got a team full of rookies, so maybe Alex Collins might have been right. A, yeah, a bit better of a pick, but that's true. We just need really, we need we just need one and a half of these rookies to hit, and we're good. Right, right, absolutely. Um, when we did that revert pick, it took Carry on off the board. We put him back up there, and we take him. So we got Carry on Johnson there in the ninth in, in the nine six spot, which building some more depth at running back. Obviously, Big Co was talking about getting cute with drafting younger guys, and we've got a decent amount of younger guys <laughs> on our team here for sure. Um, so we're at ten seven on the next pick here. Yep. Um, Taking a look at what wide receivers are available right, down here: Randall Cobb, Kenny Galladay, Robbie Anderson. Um, Donta Foreman, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Ty Montgomery. Um, don't really want any of those guys right this second. Feel like you could wait another little bit and and try to take a swing on those guys if you want them to be. I probably like Ty Montgomery the most out of this that group left. Uh, I definitely don't hate Foreman. I I could see putting him on this roster, I guess. But the piece that we always want is. Yep. Just lingering around, yep. old Larry Fitzgerald, the old, tenth round. old reliable. How could we not just hanging around? Um, and then again, for that reason that I was talking about, maybe taking Golden Tate, Demarius Thomas a little earlier in that draft instead of the Sony Michelle pick, you can then take a Larry Fitzgerald and kind of get a similar thing, if not maybe even with more upside to it, um, and get Larry Fitzgerald here. I don't know if that's actually realistic. If you can get Larry in the tenth round or not. Yeah, we um, probably we weren't even probably looking because we didn't think he would still be there. Right. And then when all of a sudden he's still there, it's just like I mean, you can make any argument in the world you want of why you should take Larry. Like for this team, we got some rookie, uh, we got some young guys, some 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 risky wide risky, receiver yeah. guys with some, with Shores a high upside. Right, up. right, just patches that whatever right. leak was was maybe there. Larry just patches it, but you don't even need to be risky at wide receiver to right. take Larry. Just take Larry. Yeah, don't overthink Larry, baby. Right. Give me, we're all in on the Larry. And train. we're having trouble with Larry in our rankings because we don't we don't want to put him too too high because you don't have to draft him as right. high as we would if right. we were forced to. But I mean, I'm when that sixth seventh round comes around, it's yeah, like, I'm man, do I Larry need Larry right now yeah. or can I can I risk it and wait another right. round? That's always the the dilemma. If you and usually get past we the do. Sixth. 
because I like Big Co's point that he made is is if you pass on him and someone else takes him, it's easier to go acquire him than whoever it was you probably took in front of him. Most likely. And so I like that. You can go probably try and go get Larry. But, I mean, man, just – Tenth round, absolutely. That, that really shows our receiving core up with the Robert Woods and the Larry Fitzgerald. I feel great about that. Yep. Um, so we take, we obviously take Larry. We're we're cruising over to pick eleven seven now. I think. Yep. And I I was making a point for Galladay last pick, but then Larry was around. I can't argue with that. I really like what Kenny Galladay has. Um, maybe we could have taken a Rex Burkhead in this position. Um. Yeah, we do have Sony Michelle. Rex is not maybe. a terrible backup so, there. Time out, Gumry, Aaron Jones, Dante Foreman fell off on us. We thought maybe we could wait, but they, they went on us. Um, Naheen Hines is available. Rex Burkhead is available. Obviously, we have Sony Michelle, so maybe Rex wouldn't have been a terrible take here. Yeah, um, I like Rex as much as the next guy for sure. Hines would be another rookie on our team, but with right. you know, good RB2 upside right. with the catches. In case we needed him. Um, so I'm, I'd be okay with Rex or Galladay here. We went with, uh, end up going with Galladay. Yeah. I'm, I just, I think this, the sky's the limit here. I think Galladay's got a ton of potential. Obviously, Golden Tate could be gone next year. I like what I saw when he was out on the field. He was just making spectacular catch after spectacular splash, catch. Splash, motherfucker. Right. Okay. Yeah, he was he flashed amazingly, and and I loved him coming out of college. We went hard in the paint for him last off yeah. season. You brought him to the table, and we just knocked it out of the park. We we because he was a small school guy and transferred, and finally ended up at Illinois, I think, in in Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois, and he just he was he's a guy that puts his head down and stays humble, works hard, works on the things he's not good at. You know, became yeah. a good blocker, made sure to be from, make that a, yeah, a point of contention days. for him, right? And so he's just, and now they're 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 praising him at at, at training camp, right. saying he's looking like a veteran out there. Golden and Tate was giving him love. He's a guy here who could become a number one dude. And when you have right. a chance at taking a a WR one potential this late in the draft, I think you got to pass on the Rex Burkhead handcuff here and grab this this yeah. guy who could potentially just shoot up these ranks. Sure, he is a, he is a little old. He'll be twenty five in November, um, but yeah. you know. I mean, lot, you know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. <laughs> He's 24. Right. You know, He'll be 25 saying he looks, in November. They're saying he looks like a veteran already. Right. So that co-aligns co with his age. But I'm okay with him being 25 in November at 11, around 11 here. Right. And, you know, maybe you have to wait another year before he's fully trustworthy and usable, and that's right. fine. Right. I'll, I'll take him in his 25th, five-year-old season. Right. And and we'll go from there. But I just like the prospect a lot. I think it's a good swing. I, exactly what you said there. That was perfect of saying... That this guy could be potential number one, and I think you got to clear your clear your plate and fill up with the Galladay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rex. We I like Rex Gallad as much as the next guy. Love Rex. We're going hot. We. It's just like Rex is another guy, kind of like uh, like Adam Thielen. Like we were so on him last off season. We were telling you to get these guys so cheap because you just there's no reason not to have them in all your teams because right. they're so cheap. Robert Woods too, and now like. Robert's the only one we're still willing to pay up for. All right. these other guys' value just in well, escalated well, Rex, so Rex high. Is, I'd still pay for Rex, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's still not terrible, but it was so cheap last year. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, 11th round and is the worst. Thielen was ridiculous. And now, like, I'm just never in the position where Thielen's right. on my radar that early. Not that I, I think Thielen's great. Right. Thielen's awesome. I just can't take him in the third or fourth round. Like. All right. So where are we at here? 12 7? Yep. So, so we really blew it. We did. <laughs> um, well, Pierre Garçon goes off the board right in front of us, which is a bummer. Right. Two picks ahead of us because so I love getting Pierre. Robbie Anderson, Naheen Hines off the board. Right. Burkhead went after we took the Galladay. Marquise Lee. So no chance for that. Would you love Bernard. to take that guy? I mean, I think we really blew it here. Um, <laughs> so it was this, there was Jordan Matthews kind of hanging around. There's a bunch of other receivers who I wasn't, you know, super stoked about having on my team. We don't need a tight end right here. Um, so we're going to stab at running backs, basically. It's, you know, we could have taken a, maybe a Corey Clement, which, you know, could pan out to be really good. We Looking at Devontae Booker, because, you know, who knows there? That's kind of a fluid situation. Um, but we kind of have this this rookie squad going down here. So we're, we we start saying, hey, well, maybe Kalen Balage And Big Cove su suggested Balage He likes the Balage He loves some Balage And I couldn't, yeah, at first, again, like when we were talking about the uh, Lamar Jackson pick a 
couple weeks ago. At first, I didn't like it. And then, like, I'm kind of looking around and I'm like, well, there's a bunch of upside and return on investment with Kalen Balaj here. And I mean, I'm, if he I'm doesn't kind of see okay the field to, at all, it's not, he's not going to be, his value is going to drop significantly. It's going to be it's super pretty, easy to it's go. It's pretty get. far down the list right now. I mean, here. 12th round. Yeah. You're right. But that's not, it still could go lower. I don't think he's going to see a ton of field yeah, I mean, time this year. I mean, we don't we don't know, but there's a, there's a decent PPR upside with He Balazs. looks like Tarzan runs like Jane. Sure. I mean, I can't I can't have that but dude. But he's probably one of the better running back receivers. Great receiver. So there there's there's the upside and, and he's and a mammoth of a man. What could happen for him? Uh, it's just a, a stab and some maybe potential quick return on investment here with with the Balage if he does pan out. Yeah. Early and often. Maybe I'll, he doesn't. I'll go ahead and mention James White's name here. We do have uh, Sony Michelle. Uh, I would, could always throw Balage on the practice squad, right? That's a good point. Um, James White is paid. They paid him in New England a, a year ago, and he had a a pretty awesome year last year. Sony obviously comes in and just puts a big dampen on him, almost the forgotten man. But if yeah. something were to happen to Sony, James White, I think, would go right back in that role. I think he still probably have some value. They're going to put him out there from right and and and. Run him, you know, sure. run him around the slot, and he'll catch some balls. I mean, he's I just, probably a guy that's never going to be on my. I just, yeah, I'm just not a James yeah. White. Well, guy. I think y'all boys like laughed at me when I brought it up, and then it kind of came around. I was like, well, maybe it's not the worst pick, but I mean, Edelman's still here. That wouldn't have been a terrible pick. We have a ton of receivers already, though. Right. So he kind of got kind of nixed him a little bit just because it's, you know, he's yeah. old. He's on a suspension. We got a bunch of receivers already. I definitely don't. I love adding Julian Edelman typically at this time in the draft because he is so cheap. But right now we didn't need him, so we ended up going with we knew Cameron Meredith was, would hang around. He's been hanging around. We've been enough of these to see how long he hangs around. Right, which I could take. I would. I want yeah. Cameron Meredith over Kalen Balage all day. Yeah, for well, I mean, sure. Yeah, but you know, basically, again, going back, like, looking you at know, the list, you know, Meredith is typically hanging around, so you can right. risk that. And Balage was up at the top of that. Running back list. I, I think next year Cam Meredith is going to be way more sought after, and Balaj is going to be, be a huge. Yeah, there could be a huge return on investment in Meredith, but you know, just knowing that he's hanging around is right something that you know makes it a little easier to make that pick. All right, right. so we we take that pick at twelve seven. Now we're on the clock at thirteen six. Um, this below pal pick that went off when at that point when it went off, I was like, I don't know why you're taking below pal, but right now, right, he would be a perfect guy for us to target, right, for this kind of lower RB thing because you got McGuire, oh, just, got McGuire just out for a while. Pal was fantastic with the touches they gave him last Anytime year. Anytime he I'm, touches I'm, the it's ball, it's an anomaly why he, this like because like, he's old. Like I don't just know. don't want him to do right. anything. Now we're gonna limit his touches. Right, it's the Mark Ingram like, effect. I, I don't he, know he what's adds, going on. He's doing something with the coach's wife. But all something. this right, all of a sudden, Bilal's back in the fold here, and this would be a fairly and Chris Carson as well just went at thirteen two. Both right. would have been maybe if I had it back. This would and, and knowing what you know now. Uh, I would be maybe more inclined on one of those guys just for, for your kind of zero RB ish. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't hate that idea, but I like who we take instead. Even if those other oh, two guys are on the, the board. Balage. Oh, instead of Balage. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, Powell's old, and it might only help us out for a season, but he could really help us out. Right. And we know he can play right. on the NFL field. He can handle the rock and he can catch it. So yeah, I mean, I, I if it weren't for the Jets just hating Bilal Powell. I, I've liked everything I've seen. Me from too. Him, me so. too. So he was just kind of off the board here, and then on that pick, you're like, "Ha, Blas or uh, Powell at 13? No way!" But now, right. that no looks McGuire. Fantastic. Yeah, like I like the Jets what, are kind of handicapped here. They're gonna have to give right. him the ball some. So they we're looking at Alfred Morris, but he doesn't do what what Powell does. Right, so and neither does uh, the other uh, Rawls, Darkwa Crowell. Darkwa Dark was a pass could be a pass catcher. Or, yeah. Um. Anyway, we're gonna. Get to pick thirteen six here. Yep, and we were looking at Booker last go round. We're still looking at um, Cam Meredith, but we're gonna go ahead and take Booker here, hoping that Meredith makes it one more pick around, which he does. Um, and then I don't Edelman, the... Edelman was still available at that point as well, so you know it's it's, it's kind of whatever. So we end up taking Booker just as another shot at a running back here. Just kind right. of how we were just talking about Powell and taking shots on running backs because we need one. Maybe it pans out for Booker. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just a pull your hair out situation. It's kind of a split deal. But I mean, for now, Booker's is, the one. If that offense is 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 moving along and scoring points, he's going to be useful. And, right. and 
Royce Freeman's never seen the NFL field before. Booker looked pretty dang good. I mean, yeah. I, there was times last year Booker made a – he had a ridiculous touchdown run where he, like, ran over somebody and jumped over another dude and then scored a touchdown. I was yeah. like, there's no way – now everybody knows if Devontae Booker's good, dang right. it. I'm not going to be able to go pick him up off the waiver anymore because he just blew up. But then they still get super disrespected. Yeah, well, they drafted a running back, and he's still did. getting a little disrespected here. He, Like you said, this is a good shot to take on him. Could pan out. Um, but basically on this roster, what we're looking for is we're basically just going to be starting two running backs most right. weeks. And we're so just, we're just trying to find the best RB2 we can find outside of David Johnson. So right. just keep swinging. Right, which is why I don't want to take and wide we're, receivers we're in the first three rounds. Mostly receivers. This is the reason why. Because now we're just we're like we're we're digging through trying to find this RB2 that we wouldn't even you have don't to know pay which attention one to, start to. When. Right. And we wouldn't even have this problem at all if we'd have taken you know, Melvin Gordon at the second pick. Right. So And then followed it up with McKinnon. Devontae Booker or McKinnon <laughs> or Howard, any of them. Right. We'd just be crushing it from running uh -huh. back. And now we're digging around in the barrel, pass hoping that Cameron Meredith makes it falls, keeps right. falling. And because he does. we need to take these running backs. He falls the fourteen six. And we take him. And we end up taking him because we don't want to miss out on that carnival mm -hmm. ride. We want to take it to that show. We like everything. We've talked about Cameron Meredith in several episodes, so you can get that uh talk really whenever you want to go back and, and check that out right um and then here's this is one of my favorite picks of this draft um marshawn lynch is just hanging, hanging around. around right and we we threw some shade on marshawn in the last draft we were doing because we were so running back heavy already right. we don't necessarily need to take the shot on marshawn right but here didn't throw shade just didn't need right, him right because we already had enough running backs well, we threw him. shade on you right because you wanted him i wanted him because like i just don't see a, cha a reason how he cracks the lineup and i was like well i disagree with that because he could be freaking crushing our, our it. lineup not right Raiders our lineup. our lineup that we were drafting um which was which was a fair heavy. point because there was a decent amount of huge starting running backs but but Marshawn's, Marshawn's going to have every crushing, opportunity here to right. do some work. If that offense turns itself around and they feed him, which I think they will, he could he could have an awesome Doug year. Doug Martin thing's kind of weird. He said he was 34. He's only 32. I told Bitco he wasn't 34 years <laughs> he old. He knew he wasn't 34. He's 32 years old, and that's a young 32 because he's missed a year. He took a year, a whole right. year off. So we, we we could have taken you know a Clement in that situation, I guess, but or or a Tyrell Williams. Oh no, he went off one pick before there. Right. Which Tyrell Williams is getting disrespected again. It's a right. good good pick by any means. We could have taken him anywhere from, you know, thirteen to to uh the last or from twelve to thirteen to fourteen. And, right. Uh, could have taken Alan Hearns. I mean, Alan Hearns he doesn't sound sexy in that Alice offense, doesn't sound sexy, but he hangs around here yeah. super late. And I start seeing we're this late into the draft and I see Alan Hearns' name, I'm like, let me get Snapping it. Let's him go ahead and for get sure. it. But Marshawn Lynch here makes a whole lot of sense for this team. Mm. Um, it gives us a decent running back depth who could be end up being in our RB two spot. Right. For I feel very comfortable the with season. that. So I love on this kind of team taking a shot on Marshawn late is took all those rookies all the all the rage. We took all these rookies and risky upside wide receivers, and then we go and just pat ourselves a little bit with Larry Fitz and Marshawn. Right. I mean, that's just you got to have a balance. You can't just. You can't play for the future, and you can't just go straight win now. You got to have a balance a little bit with of, the intention right. of winning now. Right. I mean, I'm gonna play in like a two to three year window, and then have a farm team that I'm trying to keep right building in the bottom of that thing. And sometimes you trade those assets for better prospects, and sometimes you ride them out. Right. Um, so we make the uh, Lynch pick, lose a couple of guys off the board here. We're at round sixteen, pick seven. Um, we got some options up there. We got Mitch Trubisky. We got Baker Mayfield. Um, we got Cameron Brait, ASJ. We got our handcuff, Chase Edmonds. Uh, Hooper was available. Um, we're not looking at running backs at this point. I don't really want any of those dudes that are left on that list. The Jordan Wilkins, AP, Gillisley, Lacey, McGuire, obviously not right now because he's hurt. Jay Stu, Paul Perkins, Eckler, eh. You know, Hill, Jeremy Hill is, you know, maybe because on our, on this team we have a Sony Michelle and we didn't take any of those other, uh, New England running backs, maybe that's not the worst. He's um, not even going to make that roster. But this is, again, <laughs> there's not a lot of running backs that I want. I, I'm going to probably miss the Mitchell Trubisky train. Just, I just it's gonna I go. can't ever pull the trigger. I, 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 I might I, miss out on it. He might be great. I showed up in time enough to get on the train. I just didn't get on the train. Right. I just let I the just train let leave the go. station. Right. Um, so we're going to pass up on the quarterback here. But I do have some pieces in that offense, so I hope that he's... 
I hope that he pulls it through. Yeah. I'm just going to miss out on whatever he ends up doing. We're going to end up taking another tight end to help back up maybe what Burton could do. I like the talent of ASJ. I think, right. you know, obviously it's crowded over there, but we've talked before about uh, what ASJ can do. Like, I don't... If there's one player that's not coming off the field very often, it's going to be ASJ. Right. You don't know what two team. or three right. wide receivers are going to be there, but ASJ is going to be, gonna on be the a field. constant. And I think he could be nice in the red zone and uh, a nice little middle of the field relief valve uh, opposite of, you know, the Marquise Lee kind of deal for yeah uh, the Jaguars. I mean, I would be fine if AFJ was our first tight end that we took. Right. You know, and, well, I mean, and, yeah, and we could have had another running back. Right. That's kind of what I was saying a long time ago. Um, and when you have Trey Burton, you need to take another right. tight end. Um, and this is a deep bench. We're going, uh, what was it, 17 bench spots or something right. like that? We've got so, 25-man I mean, roster here. Right. Got to get a couple tight ends. After so. we take Severian Jenkins, uh, John Brown falls off, which is a little bit of a bummer. He's a guy that I like to stab on late here. Willie Sneed, another guy who could potentially be a nice late-round I mean, this is a fourth-round pick, fifth-round pick, sixth-round pick, Willie Sneed last year. Like, right. We're getting gobbled up. Yeah. Um, but he could be potential, have a nice role in, in Baltimore. Same thing with John Brown, either one of those uh, Baltimore receivers. Joe Flacco's deep ball is reportedly on fleek right now. <laughs> on fire. Guy is just spitting hot fire. <laughs> um, but anyway, on this next pick, we're at pick 17. We don't really love anything that we're uh, doing or seeing. Um, and we end up taking Baker Mayfield here. We could have taken Mitchell Trubisky, but like we said, we kind of are just going to pass on that train. Just because I just don't feel great about it, but I mean, he could be great. I'm probably just going to miss out on it. Yeah, uh, we take. I hope it works out. We take Baker here just for the, you know, we're going to stash him away and hopefully one day he'll become our big time starter. Uh, but if I could have this one back, I'd probably take a guy like a Keelan Cole here yeah. and just continue to just punt on the the quarterbacks in yeah. one, one quarterback league. We definitely here. don't need to take Baker Mayfield. And right. You, you know, I, I like taking him in. I mean, if it's a two QB league and it's a rookie draft, I'm all over ba taking Baker Mayfield wherever you want. If uh, And how we took Lamar Jackson on the return on investment kind of deal last last week in the, in the last uh, podcast we did, I'm fine with that. And I'm fine with the same kind of deal with Baker. Maybe you get, but I don't think we really needed him here. And if I had to redo, I'm going Keelan Cole. That's fair. That's fair. Keelan's had some great reports coming out of camp, and, and they're saying he's going to be yeah. he could be the number one dude in that offense, and he showed very well and is super quick. And I'm I'm all about taking some Keelan Cole, and and we definitely didn't need Baker Mayfield, but you know whatever. So, so now we're in the 18th round here. Our handcuff still available. We got to snag him. Yeah, because we got David Johnson. He's also had some shining reports coming out of camp. We got David Johnson. Let's sign up our handcuff. We'll lock that in. Usually, we've been drafting our handcuff a little earlier than the 18th round, but Chase was so far down this list. Right. Um, as far as the other handcuffs go, we we knew we could wait, so we ended up getting old Chase Edmonds for our squad, which is a a huge bonus for us. We needed that. Got to have it. Yep. Um, and cool. now we're just in the doldrums of this draft here, and uh, so yeah, Keelan Cole goes Keelan off. Cole right does go off this. the board. So we're left at nineteen six or seven here. Um, and Quincy Anun was hanging around. He's a player that I'm super interested in coming back and claiming that slot role uh, late in drafts. I think he could have a huge year. I, I like Quincy. I liked him before he got hurt. It was a bummer that he had to miss all last year with that. Was it a neck thing? Yeah, it was a slip disc. Yeah, which isn't great, but he's so it's cheap. Not great, but this is cheap as hell. I love this. I, I love his uh, his his frame and his physicality and coming out of the slot there. He's a big guy. He's got a little bit of speed. He's not like a burner, but he can get downfield, and then he just comes down with the ball. It's yeah. the contested catches that he just goes up and makes in those close quarters. And and he's got a little bit of, he's a big body. He's got a little tight end in him. It looks like right. like they don't, they didn't have a strong tight end there for a while. And, and obviously ASJ played very well last year for him. But um, yeah, I mean in the 18th round, let's just get some upside. Uh, let's it's it's crowded over there. We're probably never 19. gonna use this guy, but it could be never it, know. he could be good. You know, he It'll showed be, flashes. And if he doesn't make our roster because he's crush because he's doing well, somebody else will want him. Right, so, right, easy. Uh, if he doesn't make you're, our you're picking up. guys here at the end of this thing who you could see rapid returns on quickly, at least in my opinion. And Quincy's one of those guys who could quickly come out and be catching six, seven balls a game uh, right. for the Jets. Obviously, it's a little crowded over there, but whatever. Um, so now we're at pick 26 here. We're going to we take Quincy and Nunwa, or we'll be 27, I believe. Yeah, so we take Quincy and Nunwa and a guy, another rookie kind of late 
round guy that we love to take and we're trying to get in every draft is Deion Kane. Deion Kane he's, or bust. He's still available. You want a cheap athletic piece of the Andrew Luck and Colts offense. Right. This is your guy. Again, if- this is how you build your farm team at the bottom of the we, we took a bunch of guys who padded our starters and now you can start kind of building a little bit of uh somewhat of a farm team at the bottom of this roster and I like Quincy Noon one and Deion Kane being a young guy to quickly have some some good turnaround and he's already articles out the yin yang about Deion Kane. Right. Cat's out of the bag. Yeah. We've been on him for months. Um so, could- so his ADP will probably move some yeah, As the it's, it's goes going on. up. Once that preseason camera starts rolling and he's out there, if he does anything at all, this is going up. Right, right. And, and a cool little little uh, take a little um, a little detour here on this video. If you're on the YouTube's, if you scroll over to our website, there's a search bar up top, and you can search. You can't search for. I mean, you can search forever, whatever you want. It might not come back with anything. We're we're working on building a player list so you can search for any player and see. Basically, all the stuff you're looking to research for him yet, that's that's coming in the future. We're not there yet, but you could come in here and, and search for Deion Kane, and you would it'll it'll spit out for you any of the stuff that we've talked about him. So Belt we've got him on four different yeah. posts here, um, which those are probably the same two posts, just broken down a little bit shorter. But we you know we've covered him, you know, in far as rookie draft and pre right. NFL draft and and you can do this with any player so this is a cool feature of our website just to go and yeah and to hit in that search bar and kind of find whoever right. we've already talked eventually about. there'll be videos and kind of the player page of right. stats right his build metrics all that kind of stuff it's our average ranking and stuff yeah we're, we're, we're working that tirelessly for all right so let's get these five picks off the board real quick here and uh finish up so 21-6 uh, we're hanging around in no man's land. Old Lamar Jackson still available. We took him last time in the 15th round. Yeah. Uh, we already have Baker Mayfield, which we said we'd probably kick him off the squad right now and take another receiver or running back. But we're going to go ahead and snap up Lamar Jackson here again for the return on uh, investment. Hate and it. Probably Whatever. not hanging around at 21 anyway. Right. But either way, he's there now. So we take him building that farm system again, trying to maybe find some pieces that you can acquire for equity and right future years and w- these are guys that we feel like a couple things go right in their way and then their value shoots up right. and we've just made some money so 22 6 trent taylor still on the board there's some other guys that i would look at uh maybe we, we should draft another tight end here just to make sure we got all our bases covered but um we are going to grab uh Trent Taylor with the 22nd pick of this draft and I just I love this Niners offense and I love Trent Taylor coming out of the slot maybe maybe Pettis puts a damper on what's going on there um we'll see but it's so late I loved Trent Taylor coming out I love his his profile I love what he can do so I'll take a swing on Trent Taylor here in the 22nd round yeah it's awesome what we've already seen from him on the field he looks feisty and gritty and the hands are awesome and he had a connection with Garoppolo it's a bummer that he's got a back thing going on right had some should sur- be had some a surgery. minor minor deal should be back soon running around building some excitement all right so we take trent there 22 7 coming back for 23 6 joe williams is on the board here who i wouldn't mind taking a swing at um and if i had to do it over again instead of taking uh the quarterback here that we select i maybe i would just put joe williams on my team and just wait another round or two and pick alex smith yeah. Because you know he's going to hang around. Yeah, we debated this. I mean, it's hard for me to take a quarterback when Alex Smith is still on the board, which he usually always is. Um, I, I do like, you know, Phil Rivers and Ben Roethlisberger. I think those are two guys that if you're looking for some upside and you want to t- you want to, you want to pull the trigger a little bit sooner than you have to with Alex Smith, I got no issue with that. We debated Phil Rivers versus Ben Roethlisberger. I think if, if we didn't have these two rookie quarterbacks already – then I would I would be just waiting on Alex Smith, I guess, um, because we have these two rookie quarterbacks and one of them could potentially pan out to be our dude. I'm not expecting Lamar to. That's just a, a ploy to get some value and trade him. But I think Baker Mayfield could definitely be our dude. And so if we have a guy like Baker, I don't mind taking the upside of Ben Roethlisberger along with the risk that he might be done after a year or two or Yeah, three. he's down some pounds and he said he's He's looking such to play a drama a queen. He's a yeah. roller coaster ride. He, he doesn't is. he just changes his mind and he's he speaks, a waffler. He speaks too soon before he really knows. He's an emotional yeah. speaker. He doesn't like he doesn't think about what he's doing before he says it. Yeah. And that's gotten him into trouble 
And but I do like that he's cutting weight. I, I like that because looks, he looks slim. Ben, that that the helmet looks always looks like it's about to <laughs> bust out. out. Yeah, uh, so that's good. But so I maybe mean, while he's in there, he's gonna crush it. So yeah, I sure. love having him on the squad. It's I know we got three quarterbacks on our team, but Which it's is, only because these two rookies fell. Right, and when you get that far and deep in the draft, it's it's really no man's land. Right, so we end up taking Big Ben here. Maybe I would probably do again. I'd take Joe Williams here just as a stab in the dark, as panning out to be a good a running, running back. back for why Kyle not? Shanahan 49ers. And know that I could still get Phil Riv or Alex Smith at worst case scenario. Um, so where that was pick 23 for Ben. We're on the clock again at 24 7. Um, here we're going to take Jalen Samuels. Just another swing on another running back. It would have been nice to go Joe Williams. And Jalen Samuels here. There's a ton of upside to like with Jalen Samuels, his athletic profile, where he's going to be, how he's going to be used is kind of a mystery. Um, I love James Conner as as a backup running back here. Uh, we, we enamored with James Conner last year, loved him, um, saying he looks good now. But Jalen Samuels is, has a different um, profile to bring to this, this team here. It's very intriguing. I'm very excited about the prospect of what Jalen Samuels could be just because of that versatility. Right. You, I don't even know fullback, halfback, tight end, tight end yeah. wide receiver. He does it all. So it's, it, when a, he, but when he fun runs, to have on your team, he looks great. When, when he runs the ball, he looks punishing. Yeah. I mean, it looks impressive and, and, and quick too. Right. He, so. it, it, when you watch him run, you wouldn't think that he's, that he is a half or a fullback or a tight end. But right. I mean, if, if something happens and you could put him in your tight, I mean, he's a tight end here. Right. We just drafted him. They put him in as a tight end. Right. That's ridiculous. That's cheating. That, yeah. If he if he's out there getting carries and stuff, and then lining up in the slot and blocking from time to time, yeah. but getting cat like, and you can put him in your in your tight ends. Your tight ends getting carries. It's why, crazy. Why not take the shot this late in a draft on a guy Absolutely. with that much versatility and and, and, and funness to have on your team? Right. It's not a word, but right. whatever. And I love I love James Conner. We went hard in the paint for him last year as well. And Le'Veon could definitely be gone next year. Right. Um. He's not going to hold out into the season this year, but he can get banged up. I mean, not just because James Connors there is not a reason for me not to take a swing on Jalen right. Samuels. I would assume that if Le'Veon Bell left, they would go find some other running back I mean, outside of Jalen guys, Smith and, and or Jalen Samuels and Connor. But you never know. I mean, you you never know. Connor looked good in his spots. So definitely last year in the preseason. All right, and then the last pick of this draft. What we're going to do? We had a fun pick in Samuels here. It was a ton of versatility. Then we're going to go ahead and grab the other Colts receiver here. With the last pick in the draft, we're going to take Ryan Grant because why not? Same thing with with uh, Deion Kane. He's probably not the athlete that Kane is, but he's been an NFL receiver. He's established, um, and and he could easily be on the field for the Colts week in, week out, getting balls from Andrew Luck. So right. why not take the shot on Ryan Grant here? Absolutely. Gave you him like a Chester bit Rogers of money. better, maybe you could take the swing, you know, whichever, whatever. I mean, Grant but, got some money though, didn't he? I mean, yeah. and and Luck can support three wide receivers, so yeah. I mean, at twenty five, you don't even he doesn't even need to be like he could just be your wide receiver four, right? <laughs> you know, right. So, so that was it. We got a B minus on this draft. Whatever those those grades we get always range up and down. Don't really care. Just kind of scrolling through our roster here. You know, I still. After all this is said and done, I, I still want to take Melvin Gordon in the second. Yeah, well, I mean, I still want to go with the with the running still back strategy. Go running but back. We wanted to show you a little bit something different here. Um, so that's going to pretty much wrap up today's edition of mock drafting. We're probably going to put these on ice for a little while. Come at you with some some new stuff we've been working on. Uh, take us out of here, Jay Wayne. Yeah, thanks for listening, everyone. Make sure you go if you're on the podcast. Make sure you go check this video out on YouTube. Um, we put in some solid effort here to bring you this little video so you can kind of follow along as a video reference. If you don't want to follow along on, on the video, if you're worried about that data on your cell phone, you can go to our website, theffdynasty.com, and be able to go to the More tab and select the uh, mock draft boards, and then you'll be able to actually download the photo of the screenshot um, of, of all the picks that we made so that right. you can follow you can look, along yeah. in, in, a, in a way. Um, please, on any of your pod platforms of choice hit subscribe podbean google play stitcher tune in radio iheart radio please if you're on itunes go down and hit that little five star review for us it really helps us out um make sure you subscribe as well go over to youtube hit subscribe there check out our our, our uh 
our website, go in and create yourself an account so you can check out the forums and, yeah. and start chatting with other people that are that are in the league and in and, and, and us. You can and chat us. with us. Yeah, we're getting in there. So um thanks for listening, everyone. Until next time, this has been Married to the Game.